Kele ita ba se ba basa. Order, honorable members. Order. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, I have been informed. Order. Order. I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance. Take your seat. For now, take your seat. Uh, honorable members, I have been informed that the Whip Party have agreed that there will be no notices of motion or motions without notice. Before we proceed, honorable members, I would, I would like to take this opportunity and welcome the Minister and Deputy Ministers that are in our house and special delegates. Order, honorable members, the Secretary will read the first and second orders of the day. Policy debate on budget vote number 24, agriculture, forestry, and fisheries. Policy debate on budget vote number 39, rural development and land reform. Appropriation bill B3, 2018. Before we proceed, I would like to allow the Honorable Julius to say whatever he wants to say. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I think there was a matter that you said you will come back to the House. Uh, you even promised it further when Honorable Hartung asked you last time. Um, and you said that the next time you'll come back to the House with that ruling. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Julius. Uh, we are done with the matter. Do you want to follow up? Can I, can I, can I please... Uh, proceed, Honourable Members. I will ask the Honourable S. Zokwane, Minister of Agriculture and Forestry and Fisheries, to come to the podium. Honourable Chairperson, Honourable Minister, Kwane, Kwana Mashamaite, Mashabani, Deputy Ministers present, Deputy Min. Chairperson and members of the Select Committee, MECs of Agriculture, members of National Council of Provinces, farmer unions and representatives of organized agriculture, sectoral, in, sectoral industry bodies, national and provincial officials of the department. Honorable Chairperson, in this State of the Nation address, President Sir Ramaphosa made the following of observations when he outlined our government strategy focus, and I quote, agriculture presents one of the greatest opportunities to significantly grow our economy and create jobs. Agriculture made the largest contribution by a significant margin to the improved growth of our economy in the second and third quarter of 2017. This year we will take decisive action to realize the enormous economic potential of agriculture. We will accelerate our land restitution program, not only to redress a grave historical injustice, but also to bring more producers into the agricultural sector and to make more land available for cultivation. We'll pursue a comprehensive approach that makes effective use of all the mechanisms at our disposal. It is right that the agricultural sector carries with it great potential to create employment and help stem the tide of the current high levels of unemployment in our country. The resilience of the sector during the recent outdrawn out, out, out drought and its current upsurge is reflected in its contribution into our GDP growth. Our mandate is, is as government is twofold. On one hand, we have to grow the sector by way of various observations such as financing the growth of smallholder farmers in their diverse commodities and attract new growth a, a, a generation of farmers targeting the youth into the sector, taking into advantage of the massive technology that is beginning to, to dominate the sector, such as robotics, 
drones and space-based technologies, which are now part of what is popularly known as smart agriculture. Young people are interested in today's industry dis the disruption technologies. We must take advantage of that. We must incorporate those new technologies into the curricula of agricultural colleges of the, of the future. Secondly, as government, we have, may, we have a mandate to use agricultural interventions to fight poverty and guarantee food security for everyone, and especially to, to the indigent. Our food and nutrition security policy elaborates our approach in this regard. Honorable Chairperson, I want to return to this point about young people and agriculture. Chairperson, this year we are celebrating the centenary of the first president of a free democratic South Africa and the stalwart of our revolution. We were both very passionate about the plight of our young people. It's therefore appropriate for me to borrow from Comrade Nelson Mandela to make a point about young people. He said, I quote, young people are capable when aroused of bringing down the towers of oppression and raising banners of freedom. Honorable members, the time is now to call upon the young people of our country and the continent to bring down the towers of malnutrition, hunger, starvation, and food insecurity. These towers cannot be brought down without young people seeing agriculture as a vehicle to that eventuality. I was excited when I read about a young Zambian girl, a granddaughter of Comrade K.K. Kaunda, who has changed stethoscope for a tractor. Trained as a medical doctor, she understood that prevention is better than cure. A better fed nation is less likely to be sick. And I, and I quote, she says, my next thought was how do I help my people afford a better health care and be free from poverty? Then I trace back to agriculture that made our lives better. She continues, doing farming myself could send a signal to many Zambians who think your life can only be better if you have an official job, which is not true. Most billionaires in Zambia are into farming business. Closer home, honorable members. About a month ago, I met, I met a young female farmer who is so passionate with what she is doing. Her name is Nam Sasukweya, a food technologist turned farmer. She worked for Woolworth and decided to leave her cozy job and, become, and, be, and, and, become, and became a farmer. Now, members, today she supplies one of the biggest chain stores with letters, le with letters, with letters, cabbage, herbs, green beans, spinach, soya beans. We were having in a cultural summit, and she was present as a delegate. We didn't meet anywhere else, honorable member. She is Minister, just outside Pretoria. She partnered please with please. an established farmer. They agreed on a win-win outcome. The tragedy is that she leases the land she, uses, she is using at a very high cost. It is true. It, it is thus a fallacy to argue that young people do shy away from agriculture. What we what she needs from us, that we make land available to her. And I agree with those who said the land belongs to those who work it. Before, before I deal with this budget allocation, I wish to reiterate a, a warning I sounded last year that we must refrain from politicizing agriculture and the challenges faced by both farmers and farm workers alike in the sector. Recently, we have observed in the media formation, such as the AFRI Forum, spreading misinformation on global platforms about a genocide on white people in South Africa arising out of the current discourse on land. These claims are without foundation and as such must be exposed. I wish to take this opportunity to command to commend Agri SA for speaking out against this misinformation campaign by, by AFRI Forum. Agri has produced a report to the effect that claims of a white genocide in South Africa are unsupported by evidence, and that farm matters in South Africa are actually a 20 year old. It is encouraging to observe that there are white South Africans who will not let narrow opportunistic agendas to derail serious attempts to find a lasting solution to challenges experienced in this sector. 
this bodes very well with nation building in our country. And I would once again like to commend those who stand up and say there's no genocide in South Africa. We're dealing with criminality. The total allocation for vote 24 amounts to 7.1 billion rands, of which 3.9 billion is allocated as transfers and subsidies. 2.3 billion is allocated as conditional grants to provinces. Comprehensive cultural support program grant is 1.7 billion. Ili Malitzema projects grant 552 5, million. And, health, and, and, and land care program grant, which is 77.8 million rands. 1.3 billion is allocated to the public entities, the department, with 1.1 billion is allocated to a cultural research council. 259 million to Marine Living Resources Fund. 43 million, so 43.2 million to NAMAC. 6.6 .6 million to Nekha Farms and 585 million to PPECB. May I add that Nekha Farm will, does not exist anymore as it has been part of it transferred to uh, 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 the area of uh, 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 dealing with an animal, uh, 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 what, what, is, what, what we call in, in, in English, de homo. The CASP and Ilimalitzima conditional grants have been moved from 74 to 5 of the Division of Revenue Act, which requires that provinces must account per project. And I would like to say this, that we have taken a stand that if provinces cannot prove how funds are used, we will make sure that no more funding is allocated. The following amounts have been allocated as earmarked funds, food security and quality assurance, upgrade of diagnostic and analytical laboratories, infrastructure and equipment is allocated 20 million. Strengthening of inspection and quarantine services, 40 million. Cultural census, 100 million. Development of input and export system, 25 million. Expanded public works program, incentive working for forestry, 2.2 million. LENK is a community-based and government-supported program that seeks to optimize agricultural productivity and enhance the sustainable use of natural agricultural resources. Let the land care program allocations to provinces is as follows. Eastern Cape is allocated 10.9 million, Free State 7.6 million, Gauteng 5.3, KwaZulu Natal 12, 12 million, Lipopo 12.6, Pumalanga 8.3, Northern Cape 7.7, Northwest, 8.3. Government has identified Akasara as a key job driver targeting the sector to create about 1 million jobs by 2030, a target that can be achieved through increased youth participation in the sector. Akasara forestry and fisheries sectors are characterized by aging farmer population and a higher rate of unemployed graduates. To respond to this, the department has developed a cultural graduate plan placement program, which is, which is implemented from this month. A total of 1,000 unemployed graduates will be benefit from this initiative. The objective of the program is to provide um, unemployed graduates in the sector with an opportunity to gain on-the-job training. A total of 120 graduates will be placed per province in in Eastern Cape, Free State, KwaZulu, Natara, Limpompo, Mpumalanga, Northwest, and Western Cape, with Gauteng in Northern Cape, we are located 80 graduates each. To improve civil delivery of our farming communities, a candidate engineering support model has been developed and approved. Fisheries development. Masisizane, Brimstone, and Old Mutual together has created a fund of 1 million rands that will be established to help small scale fish, fishers to have, who have challenges to, with access to funding. And this is what we would like to see happening in the private sector by a number of other uh, commercial companies, not only li limited to fisheries. As we know that without funding, you may have access to land. If you don't have access to funding, you will not be able to produce anything. How do we commercialize black farmers? With regard to commercialization of black small 
smallholder farmers. A draft commercialization framework has been developed, cooperation with the Department of Trade and Industry. The department is partnering with Land Bank, Banking Association of South Africa, which is made up of NetBank, APSA Standard Bank, FNB, and Agribis to provide blended funding and increased participation of black commercial producers in agriculture, forests, and fisheries. In line with outcomes of Operation Pakisa in agriculture, flood development, and land reform, the department aims to create support for 450 sustainable and profitable black commercial producers participating in industrialized agricultural and processing value chains. And to do this, we need to do a number of things. One, to ensure that for every agreement we sign with any global entity to, for export, the part thereof should be a production by small scale uh, farmers. Because without that access to any, in, in, in any such opportunity, they will not be able to, to achieve their goals. An amount of 581.7 million was advertised for this purpose. The following are some of the projects to be supported in this financial year. In the Eastern Cape province, a partnership between Green Farmer Development Association and Green South Africa is targeting 52 hectares, 52,000 hectares production of maize with an average yield of six tons per hectare, benefiting 18,233 smallholder and communal farmers. Wool and more hair production. Farmers in the Eastern Cape produce 90% of all South African wool, 52% of the world's more hair. Currently, smallholder and communal farmers receive less than 5% of the national average price of wool. Macadamia development. A partnership between Land Bank and Eastern Cape Development the Department of Rural Development and Agrarian Reform is developing a 91 hectare of macadamia nuts. This will result in 320 hectares planted between communities of Willow Vale and Necha, creating 500 jobs. And, and let me say that macadamia can be grown in four provinces, which is Eastern Cape, KZN, Mbumalanga, and, and Lipopo. Therefore, through partnerships in this form, we believe that we can make sure that the land that is unused can put into use in a, in a, in a, in a way that is sustainable. Free State, the biggest portion of the Ile Malitzema budget, 65% allocated to production input support for citizens and smallholder producers to increase grain and livestock production. The program will support 46 projects for the production of two 2,453 hectares benefiting 16 subsistence producers, 53 smallholder producers, and it is expected to create 461 jobs. Harib district was allocated, is allocated 8.5 million for sheep and ostrich. Mangaung metropolitan area received 9 million for maize, vegetables, and pastures, beef, pigs, and poultry. You're left with five district. Minutes, Minister. All right. And each, each province is allocated, but the challenge on us is to ensure that our monitoring and evaluation is very key. The case of Northwest is a point that we should look at. Not only limiting it to Northwest to say that wherever there has been an allocation of funding, government must follow up, and provinces who do not follow the, 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 the procedures of dispensing funding should not receive any. With that, we believe so that we have listened to all those who have raised the flag. We have done our work. There is an, M an MTT and the all MET departments have, have been placed on section 100 and 101A, 101B. We believe that province will change and that's what we would do. And we need the support of each and every member in this house. Working together, we can save our, save our people. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. The Honorable Minister Nkwana Mashabani. Mudula Stulo, Juan Toya NCUP. Um, Moleluku Paraparoa Chatemo, 
tate so kwana le motlatsi wa gagwe patlatsi ba khoro ya rural development and land reform the officials tshe department tshe 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 khoro tshe pedi tshe dikopane mmo ba ka di fokeng go ba leng gona mo distinguished guests fellow south africans ladies and gentlemen i'm honored to present to the ncop budget board a speech of the department of rural development and land reform in the year that we celebrate the centenary of the birth of the father of our nation nelson rolitlatla mandela le ma albertino nansikelelo sisulu in it is in this year that as we remember masisulu re go pole gore ge a lela tokologo she also focused on the fact that land access to land should be also to those who work it basadi masora tipa ka bogaleng le baswa ba rena it is in this year when we commemorate the centenary of madiba that we should remember that in 1994 the first law to be passed by the first democratically elected parliament was the resolution of land rights act number 22 of 1994 this was done with conscious acknowledgement of land justice but it is important to deal with challenges of poverty unemployment and inequality in 1995 barely a year into democracy madiba recalled that and i quote with freedom and democracy last year came the restoration of the right to land and with it an opportunity to address the effects of centuries of dispossession and denial at last we can as a people look our ancestors in the face and say your sacrifices were not in vain at los kid madiba understood the importance of ensuring that land be returned to the dispossessed masses of our people he understood that land redistribution resolution and security of tenure are important elements of the covenant to build a society in which all South Honorable Africans Kony, live in it. Please don't drown this. Black and white. And will be able to walk tall, assured of their inalienable right to return to human dignity. Siriti Sabato, Sabuele Batum. During the handover of land in Kremlin to the, to the Kremlin community, uh, community in 1998, Madiba said, and I quote, South Africans have fought wars of, uh, with each other over land. Bitter fields have raged. People have died for it. In this regard, South Africa is no different from most countries in the world, but our country, and in our country, the dispossession of land was also part of the oppressive apartheid system that set us one against the other. By making most South Africans landless in the country of their birth, that system produced inequality and division and poverty, close quote. The 54th African National Congress Conference Resolution on Land Expropriation Without Compensation brings into sharp focus the challenges of land reform, including the slow pace of high land prices and 
have distorted the, the land market impending speedy redress Honourable of Minister. the imba land imbalances. Sorry for the disturb. Please take your seat. Take your seat, Honourable Minister. The Honourable Member Mukwili. Thank you, Chair. I just want to check with the Honourable Minister that he can, she can take a question. As a train. Honourable Minister, are you ready to take a question? I still have uh, closing remarks to make, so I will answer the question then. At the moment, she's not, so she's you not can ready, take Honourable your question Mokwele. and then you will take answer. No, Honourable will Mokwele. Mokwele. She's not ready. Take Honourable Honourable Mokwele. In the first state of the nation address, Honorable, Honorable Kony, you know what you're doing is not right. Uh, the, the, the Honorable Mukwele, Honorable Mukwele, Honorable Mukwele, he's not going to be able to do the Honorable I Chair, this is Northwest. I'm seated where Northwest sits. But she's not here. But I'm not, uh, but it's within my right to stand up. No, yes. Yes. But then I, I request you not to drown the speakers. I'm not drowning. That's why I stood up. Yes. On, so on can I you? raise on my point of order? Honourable members, we can't do that. Take your seat. I, I have noted the honourable member that should be after after you, and the honourable Lawaskasan will then follow. Why are you standing, honourable Mugwe? Eh, wabona, eh, honourable chair, riskera nyasa na wabon. Honourable member, give me this or robot load support. Are eh? Ha feza are me kwaya ka. Kibata kora I explain ne kora kimi kwaya fing. Elonghori is not allowed in this house. Honorable Minister, 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 Okay. That's all I. That's what I. Are, I want to confirm. Oh, oh, okay. Honorable Mukwele, here. Honorable Mukwele, ntumele le, ntumele le, kibole le. Okay. Here, here, kita yo, kita yo level le handsad. Kiko arna bu minister berile. Then retataro ya kutabai. Honorable Lawaskahan, I have noticed uh, the honorable Shavon. Before you. Answer to the Ula sisters, honorable member, don't worry. The, the honorable Mutla Shuping, honorable Mutla Shuping, please talk to me. Uh, All the honorable members. Honorable, honorable chair, let me respect you and not uh, bring this the decorum of the house down as yes. uh, Honorable Hatton would want to call us Jay and would want to be respected as an adult. He must Don't respect point. us. Don't point. Now, what I'm saying, Chair, which is a matter of principle, is that in terms of the Northwest, uh, Honorable Mokwele, where, where she is you? sitting, is the leader of the delegation. Yes. And uh, I have duly arrived in the house now and as to where I was, it's not Honorable Mokwili's business, and Honorable Mokwili must go and occupy her seat, and I occupy my rightful seat as the leader of the delegation. Uh, on Honorable Mutashibing, uh, 
I'll allow the House to continue, Honorable Mutashipin. Honorable Abstachem? Honorable Abstachem? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I want to refer to the rules of this House that determine that a member of this House cannot speak or address a question or do a order, point of order if you are not in your seat. Now, the front seats in this House is allocated either to the chief whips or the whips of provinces or special delegates. I'm very sorry. Uh, the point of order cannot be addressed and we cannot, we, we cannot go on in this way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Lovstachan. Your point of order carries weight. Honorable Mukwele, please go and occupy your seat. Leave that seat, Honorable Mukwele. Can I? On Honorable Mukwele, I, I did not allow you to speak. Please take your seat. Okay, you are noted. Honorable Mukwele, please go and take your seat. You are standing, Honorable Kony. No, 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 no. We, we are still busy with you. Can you, can you I can you noted you, Honorable Kony. Take your seat. What do you, how, take your seat, Honorable. I, I said you will follow after Honorable Mukwele. That's what I said. Please listen. Chair, Chair, I think this house started at 2. Honorable Mukwele. This house Honorable started Mukwele, at 2. I requested you. To yeah, I will. But I let me. Can you, address you. Address can you allow me to address you? Can you allow me to address you? This house started at 2. Mukwele. No one has. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Go and, uh, go and address me on your seat. Please let, leave that seat. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable Mugwele. Honorable Mutlashi being occupy your space, please. And, and next time, please make sure that you respect time. Honorable Mugwele. Uh, we are done, me and you. Now it is the time for Honorable Kweni. Are you not done? Okay, address me, Honorable, Honorable Mugwele. Chair, yes, when we point? started... Is it a point of order or a question? Chair, it's a point of order what is the point and a of point order? of privilege at the same time. Okay. When we started the house at 2 o'clock, Mososa was not in the house. Who is Mososa now? It's a honorable, honorable Mutlasupi. Okay. Continue. He was not in the house when we started. Order, nobody, honorable members, no, no, nobody has ever mentioned. Nobody has ever mentioned that I'm not within my seat. Secondly, honorable chair, this is the row of Northwest. It overlaps to this seat. And Northwest, you must remember that we don't have a premier. Therefore, no one has appointed anyone to be the leader of delegates. So it is within our rights as delegates to appoint ourselves. So Honorable Labus Kahne cannot come from Western Cape and tell me that I'm not at my seat. I will allow, I will allow Musosa to sit there because he's my friend, not because of any other thing. Honorable Isaac, please take your sure. seat. You can't do that. Uh, the Honorable Mutla Shipping, I want to understand that the, the leader of the delegation gave you the responsibility, but you came late. Can you please, can you, order, order, I am saying, listen to me, Honorable Kony, please, Honorable, Honorable Mutla Shipping, you knew that you were given this, this responsibility today by the leader of the delegation, but you chose to arrive late. Can you please stand up and apologize to your Honorable colleagues? So that you continue. Uh, no, no, thanks, honorable uh, uh, chairperson. Uh, at least, at Order, least. Order, honorable members. No, no, honorable, honorable Mutla Shuping was assigned a particular task and arrived after the house sitting. And, and, and that as it may be, chairperson. Honorable Mutla Shuping is in the house as the leader of the Northwest delegation. And if there is an honorable Msosa here, 
Maybe you must go and look for her. I don't know who's honorable Honorable Mr. GP, allow us please to keep the decorum of No, the thanks. House. I'm not. I'm not honorable. I'm not Msosa. Yes. That, we have dealt with that one. You are honorable Mr. GP. Okay. Uh, the honorable Isaac, we, we are done with the matter. Now I want to continue the business of the day. Honorable Isaac. Honorable Chairperson, yes, thank you. Uh, Honorable Isaac, I did not allow you to speak. Take your seat. Take your seat, Honorable Isaac. Take your seat. Take your seat. Thank you, Honorable Isaac. Honorable Goni, are you still on the same matter or on a new matter? No, it's, I'm not on, I was on the same matter, but then my, my, my whip has spoken, so I'm covered. But then I want to question you, Chairperson. Uh, Every time one is an EFF member who stands up on a point of order and you, you, you end up ruling that it's not a point of order, you, you tell them that they... they Honorable Goni, are you done? No, I'm not. How, Honorable Zamini. But Honorable Kathy almost Zamini. put her finger in my mouth. How, 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 how would I finish? And then Chairperson, Honorable uh, Labaskakne there stood up on a point of order that was not a point of order and you do not rule on that, number one. Number two, Honorable Mutashuping comes here late and then stands up and grandstands. Instead of apologizing as you had directed him to do, he stands up and gives us a, a grammar of some sort. So please be consistent, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much. Firstly, the Honorable Lawaskakhan was correct. That is why I requested your leader to go and occupy her own seat. Can you allow me to, can you allow me, allow me to, Honorable Mukwili, Honorable Mukwili, Honorable Mukwili, Honorable Mukwili, Honorable Mukwili, Honorable Mukwili, do you want to go out, Honorable Mukwili? Honorable Mukwili, okay, order. Uh, Honorable Isaac, I see your hand is up. What is the problem? Yes. Before you tell me to sit down again, Honorable uh, Chairperson, uh, for the sake of the decorum of the House, I'd like you to rule if it is correct for Honorable Mukweli from the EFF to wear a T-shirt in this House displayed nationally that says FOK. Honor Honorable, Honorable Isaac, please take your seat. Minister, let us continue the business of the day. Thank you, Chair. In his first State of the Nation address, President Salo Ramaphosa committed the government to accelerate the land redistribution program, not only to address a grave historical injustice, but also to bring more producers into the agricultural sector. I think the Honorable Minister of Agriculture has spoken at length on this matter. In this context, he committed the government to pursue a comprehensive strategy that makes effective use of all mechanisms at our disposal. This is the NCOP, where minds from all provinces should be meeting on how we should deal with this issue of access of land and land disposition. And that this strategy will include Consideration of expropriation without compensation in the light of the resolution of the ruling party. During the State of the Nation debate, the President further emphasized that the disposition of land was the original sin. Its consequences are still felt in our society today, and make no mistake, it must be addressed. In line with the parliamentary process, now underway to consider the possible uh, amendment of the uh, constitution to provide to uh, expropriation of land without compensation. Our department will contribute to debate, including providing our position on the constitutional modalities and policy implications. In pursuit of radical socio-economic transformation, we are determined to ensure that land ownership becomes an, and, and land ownership becomes an economic asset for our people. Honorable Mukwele, the speaker is protected. Ruler, 
rural development remains key economic transformation to the poor in rural areas, including where I come from or where I was born. When I was born in Mahoslu, and I will give you fuller details later, so I know what land disposition is about, and I will speak Hon to the Honorable chair. Minister, Honorable Minister, don't respond to them. Continue okay. with your debate. Okay. When Order, Honorable Smith. When productive pieces of land Order. are availed to people, this constitutes attractive opportunities for investment. It doesn't end there. Training in financial management and linkage to the markets for the uptake of produce are the next crucial steps. These are some of the aspects which are lacking to transition the rural economy into the mainstream lucrative economy. Our department needs to spare no effort in uplifting the rural economy with the necessary support that it needs, with an intention to restore the dignity and self-sustenance of our communities. The active involvement of the communities will not only lead to much needed rural development, but could also be a catalyst in reduction of uh, prices of goods in the market. For 2018-2019, we will focus on bringing into operation nine rural uh, economic zones originally anchored and pursued under AgriParks program. AgriParks initiative will catalyze the development of the surrounding areas, including integrated human uh, settlements, and making them a hive of activity, thereby creating jobs, ownership, reducing inequality, poverty, and unemployment. The key aim of this initiative is to ensure that our people in the second economy fully participate in the economic value chain, including market access. We also, and that will also provide infrastructure and enterprise support to rural economy enterprises. And we will, and we believe that this will serve indeed as a catalyst for our people. In accelerating land redistribution, the department will be acquiring 91,950 hectares of land at a total budget of 1.1 billion so that our people get to back to where they should go back to. To improve the livelihoods of rural communities in prioritized rural districts, we shall roll out 80 infrastructure projects to support production. For this program to gain momentum, support will be required from various stakeholders in legislated such structures such as the national departments, municipalities, both district and rural, but also the role of our provincial governments. Lee Bagadifuke, we shall refine our intergovernmental strategy to advance, advance this mission. While the parliamentary process unfolds... You are left with three minutes, Honorable Minister. Thank you. While the parliamentary process unfolds, the department will continue to advance to land reform through existing programs of land restitution, redistribution, and land tenure. In conclusion, for now, Chair, we note we do not want to see another day of our people carrying the remains of their loved ones in the middle of the street and having nowhere to bury them. I fell into it, but this is part of the restoration of, of 
giving ownership back to our people. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Take a seat. Uh, the Honorable O.J. Sefako. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. Honorable Permanent Delegates, Honorable Ministers, Deputy Ministers, DGs present, officials, distinguished guests. It is indeed a great pleasure to be given this uh, privilege to participate in today's budget votes of the twin departments, the Department of uh, Agriculture, Forestry and Fishery, the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform. Honorable Chair, this budget vote takes place at a time in which the glorious movement, the African National Congress, is celebrating the two great revolutionaries, that uh, Nelson Mandela and Me Albertina Sisulu. We will follow their ideas, ideals, and their values like a sinking star beyond the utmost bounds of human thought. Chairperson, allow me to join the progressive global community in condemning the brutal killing of women and children of Palestine by the apartheid Israelites government. Africa cannot enjoy freedom until Palestine is free. I should equally condemn the brutality of the people of uh, uh, Morocco, which are perpetrating that to the Saharan people. Africa can equally not claim to be free until the people of Sahara are also free. Honorable Chair, this budget vote is indeed taking place Chairperson, allow me to yeah, I've uh, done with that policy uh, Honorable Chair, will agree that uh, land comes first before agriculture. Yes. We need land to practice agronomy and animal husbandry. The land is a predominant means of production. Uh, I can confirm that uh, both department did present before the, the budget vote before the, and the annual performance plan before the select committee on land and mineral resources for deliberations and considerations. The land question is historic and emotive. It started with the wars of uh, conquest, land dispossessions, and forceful removals. It is pre-colonial, during colonial, post-colonial, and the new dispensations are still struggling for the land questions. Sol Plaki, in his Mexican diary, has this to write. Awakening on Friday morning, 
June the 20th, 1913, the South African native found himself not actually a slave, but a pariah in the land of his birth. Blachi devoted his life, time, and his modest resources to the fight against the 1913 Land Act. The consequences of uh, the Land Act were published on the native life in South Africa. There was a special column on the newspaper called Abantu Batu. The column was called, What Do the People Want? That is where the, 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 this glorious movement is indeed at all material times. Whenever it takes a decision, it ensures that uh, people are taken on board. Communities issues cannot be discussed without involving them. Even our legislative frameworks, whichever, we make sure that uh, the affected and interested communities participate. The Freedom Charter has this to say, the land shall be shared among those who work it. Restrictions of land ownership on a racial basis shall be ended and all the land redistributed, divided among those who work it to banish famine and land hunger. The state shall help uh, the peasant With, Im with implements, seeds, tractors, and dams to save soil and assist. All shall have the right to occupy land wherever they choose. People shall not be, be robbed of their cattle, forced labor, and farm prison shall be abolished. Programs such as Ili Malitsima and the comprehensive support program are indeed most important one to make sure that the poor are assisted. The Ready to Govern document of 1992 has this to say, the land dispossessions and denial of rights to land have resulted in the present unequal divisions of land and landlessness, which will require legislative interventions far beyond the mere repeal of the apartheid laws. Equally so, the, the through you, Chair, <laughs> through you, Chair, President. Uh, uh, all right. It is ANC's view that the legacy of forced removals and the dispossessions must be addressed as a, a fundamental point of departure to any future land policy for our country. This is the quote from uh, the RDP document of 1994. RDP document, okay, yeah, ready to cover. The RDP document of 1994, it says, land is the basic need for
for rural dwellers. Apartheid policies pushed millions of black South Africans into overcrowded and impoverished reserves, homelands and township. In addition, capital intensive agricultural policy led to the, length, the large scale evictions of farm dwellers from their land and home. The, abol the abolitions of uh, the Land Act cannot re redress inequality in land distributions. Only a tiny minority of black people can afford land of uh, the free market. The African National Congress has never encouraged land rush and irresponsible land grab. The land must be expropriated without compensations within the parameters of uh, the Constitutional Act 108 of uh, 1996. To fight poverty, inequality, and unemployment, land must be equitably redistributed. The December 2017 ANC conference resolved that uh, land must be expropriated without compensation. The recent farm workers and the farm dwellers evicted here in Western Cape is indeed a fertile ground for the implementations of uh, the aforementioned resolution, expropriations without compensation. Land reform and the Constitution. Soon after the transitional government, ANC endorsed a three-pronged process of land reform, embracing restitutions, redistributions, and tenor reform. Restitutions is the return of land to the blacks whose last land was uh, in an evil manner taken from, from them. Uh, redistribution seeks to transfer 30% of uh, the commercial farm to black by 2025. Tenor security intend to address issues of title deeds to people living in former homelands, trust land, and farm workers and farm dwellers. Honorable Chair, the, the trust land and the reserve are indeed a drop in an ocean. We know exactly where the bulk of the land is concentrated. The bulk of, the, of South Africa is concentrated in the few male white minority, as uh, the honorable leader of DA, my uh, Mela has said, that indeed to push this poverty inequality we'll have to make sure that uh, these highly concentrated riches need to be redistributed. I indeed agree with uh, this leader of uh, the DA. Communal property associations. The infighting in the majority of the CPA impede socioeconomic uh, progress in, the, in farming. The government cannot be expected to be conflict resolution agent. It is the responsibility 
of all the beneficiaries to make sure that uh, they work in a cordial way. We should equally condemn those that uh, are selling back the lands without consulting the beneficiaries and buying taxes coming from Eastern Cape to come and uh, do some taxi here in uh, the Western Cape. Really, indeed, that need to, to be condemned. The following best performing CPA per province. Honorable Mokwili. In, uh, in uh, we've got, we've Order. got uh, a case of uh, the best performer per province in terms of uh, the CPA. It's not all that are not doing well. If you go to province per province, in Eastern Cape, we've got the five CPA, which is uh, one of those that are doing well. And uh, Amashezi, uh, Delindala, Through you, Honorable Chair. Don't listen to them, Honorable Speaker. Robudulala, Hasore Robits. I get Roko Paboroko, Kahugudula. The trust that I indicated is only a drop in an ocean. We know where a high concentration of land is. The trust are all those that are already in the crawl. You can work on them. We must go all out to ensure that uh, these high concentrations of the land should be equitably redistributed yes. to the poor. Yeah. Honorable Mukwele, Honorable Kweni, order. Murula Stulo. Make <laughs> Se chaba sa Afrika bora. Ebe ya ko pichel la lo kono ko bo mukwele ko pichi di sule ya. Ko le mpopo kwa kwa zulu. Eastern Cape mo khothe. Se se le nteng ke gore a le tsogo ko bong le se kala nna teng. E ke ipichelle e ke ipichelle. E lokise e tokafatse Marcelo, I'm Africa. Uh, the African National Congress, the Tokare Terra, the Ganyan Sokabo, the Pizzi, Yarolebo. Yarolebo, rest of all. The Honorable Member C.F. Bayer Smith. Honorable Chair, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, Members, Public in the Gallery, and fellow South Africans, Dumelang, Apshe Nda Dimasiari, Khoya Madag, and a good afternoon to you all. I am pleased to present to you the DA Alternative, an alternative that will focus on job creation, economic growth, and investor confidence in our Order, beautiful Honorable country. Members, with, uh, with its beautiful people and natural resources. South Africans are fed up with all the negativity that is brought by the current corrupt invest infested ANC government, like the economic and political instability, the poli uh, policy flip-flopping and chronic Smith. job losses. Thank you. 
the Honorable Member Maukua, you are standing. Chairperson, I rise on a point of order. What is the order? That this member is misleading the public and the House oh. with his assertion <laughs> that he has just made about the ANC government, and I ask him to either withdraw or to apologize. He is casting aspersions on the ANC government that he cannot substantiate. Uh, honorable, honorable order, honorable members order. Honor, honorable um, Makua, you will get your chance and come to the podium. During the, your debate, you can then address the issue. Let's allow the honorable member to continue with the debate. Continue. Thank you, honorable chair. As I said, South Africans are fed up with all the negativity that is uh, brought by the current corrupt, infested ANC government, like the economic and political instability, the po policy flip-flopping and chronic job losses. Just yesterday, it was announced that the economy shrunk by 2.2% in the first quarter of this year. And the biggest negative contributor was the agricultural sector, which plunged by 24.7%. Honorable members, we have nine and a half million South Africans who are sitting at home with no hope. This is scandalous. We should all feel angry about this. I do. We, South Africans need hope. They need to dream again of a prosperous South Africa that will make them feel proud and wanted. Dear Order. South Africans, I Order. know you were looking forward to the false dawn promised in the beginning of this year by the new president. But truth be told, it, it is actually a sunset. The new dawn can only be under a DA-led government, and it can be yours in 2019, with total change that bring jobs and economic growth. The DA will build one South Africa for all, where all South Africans actually become landowners with title deeds and not simply tenants of the state. Don't be fooled by the populist EFF and flip-flopping ANC by, by who promise you, uh, to give you the land. Honorable Smith, please take your seat. Uh, Honorable Mukwele, best, order, best, order, best, order, best I don't members. care Honorable, whether... Honorable Mukwele, why are you standing? Thank you. I'm standing on a point of order. What First, I don't care order? whether what he calls us... What is the point us, of order? Whether he calls, uh, he calls us populist, we don't care. Fact of the matter is that it is through the EFF that the matter of expropriation Honorable of Mugwele. land Honorable without Mugwele. compensation, it is us who Honorable made it Mugwele. clear that we want our Honorable land Mugwele. and we want the... Can you, please, can you please listen to me, Honorable Member? Honorable Mukwele, Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele, Honorable Mukwele, Honorable Mukwele, that is not a point of order. You are debating, and you know it's totally wrong. Take your seat, Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele, take your seat. I have ruled on the matter. I want to continue with the business of the day. Honorable Mukwele, you cannot argue with the chairperson. What is the point of a privilege? point of privilege is that it is clear that the white people have stolen you our are land. Debating and we are Mukwele. You are debating, Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele, you are debating. Take your seat, Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Mukwele. Honorable Isaac. No, you can't do that. You can't continue to do that, Honorable Isaac. Honorable Mukwele, that was not a point of order. No, it was not a point of privilege. You are debating from the chair. Okay, let's continue. 
Hey, honorable Chavangu, now you're joining honorable Mukwili. I'm not joining. Okay, why are you standing? Honorable member there. Why are you standing, Honorable Chavangu? I am standing on the point of order. What is the point of order? The Honorable Member there is misleading the nation. It has been agreed in principle that the land is going to be expropriated. You are debating, Honorable Chavangu. Amanda. You are debating, Honorable Chavangu. That is not correct. Continue, Honorable Smith. Honorable, Honorable Faba, I want to continue with yes. this. Yes, Chairperson, Chair Why are you yes, I, I would just like to help you, Chairperson. Help the, me the with what? The decorum. <laughs> Chairperson. Order, Honorable Members, order. Order, order. He, can't, he knows he can't help you. Take your seat, Honorable, Honorable Faba. Chair, Chair honorable person. Faba, you know you can't okay. help me. On a, Take your seat, we are done with the matter. You were here well, with a point of order, yes. With a point of order, yes, Honorable Papa. Continue. When Honorable Mudise was here, there was a ruling. That when people stand up to try and prevent the decorum of this house, that it gets to chaos. And, and Honorable Mudise was saying that she will cut off if a speaker is not listening. We had this problem with the EFF previously, and Honorable Mudise. That is not a point of order, Honorable Member. She will stop this. It's not a point of order. Take your seat. Continue, Smith. Order. Honorable House Chair, before I continue, I want you to, uh, also on a point of order. The Honorable uh, Mokwele was accusing me of stealing land. On, honorable, so I want honorable you to Mokwele, rule on that, to, please. I want to hear what the Honorable Member is saying. Honorable, honorable Smith, on please, a point, on a point all, of order. Let us all listen to him. The Honorable Mokwele accused me of stealing land, and I want you to rule on that. Honorable Mukwele, you accused the Honorable Smith of stealing the land. I did not. Hear it is. It is. It is in history that they came in 1652, uh, white uh, people, and the they took our land. Honorable Mukwele, did you? They stole it. They were giving our forefathers. They were giving our forefathers mirrors. They were giving our forefathers knives. Honorable it's in Mukwele. history. Honorable it's Mukwele. recorded. Honorable if he Mukwele. wants me to, to withdraw Mukwele. the truth, I will withdraw the truth. But it's the truth. But I'm withdrawing. But he knows that is the truth. Honorable Mukwele. But I withdraw. Please withdraw, Honorable Mukwele. Withdraw, but Thank I withdraw very, the thank truth. Thank you very much. Take your seat. Yeah. I withdraw the truth. I, 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 want, to, I want to close this matter. The Honorable Member has withdrawn. Honorable, Honorable Smith, continue with the debate. Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Lavaskahan, I'm not going to continue with the point of order on this one. I, I now want to continue. Please take your seat. We are done with the matter. Continue, Honorable Smith, she has withdrawn. Honorable Smith. Take your seat, Honorable Smith. Uh, hon honorable. Hey, person, oh, it's not necessarily a point order, of order. Order. Chairperson, it's not necessarily. Order. Honorable Stock, order. It's not necessarily a point of order, but really it's a call of concern. We cannot afford a situation where the house is degenerating like this. Much as you are entertaining the point of order, but ensure that you are more decisive and not entertain frivolous point of orders, please. I, 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 I think, honorable member, you spoke in a wrong time. We are done with the matter. And the honorable member was on the podium. Continue with the debate. So you're taking us back. Continue, honorable Smith. Uh, thank you, Chair. If you can just update me on my time because I don't have time here in front of me. Chair, I don't have time here in, in front of me. Uh, on, 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 honorable Smith, I have a clock. That is why I was reminding the members. Yeah, but I just want to know left. how much time I've got left because. You, you rem remember when there is point of order, we stopped the watch. Now they're, they're, they're still rectifying it. You're left, you're left now with nine minutes. Thank and you, I Chair. Also have the watch. 
Honorable Chair, as I said, South Africans, don't be fooled by the populist EFF and the flip-flopping ANC who promise to give you land. They are actually just using you to get total control of all the land so that they can grab the best pieces for themselves and their cronies. They are not planning to give you ownership of any land. They want to use the land to control you because you will only become a tenant of their land and will pay them rent for it. They will determine who gets the land and how, may, and how you may use it and for how long and how much rent sorry, you must sorry, pay honorable, every honorable month. Smith, honorable Smith, don't take your seat, Honorable Smith. On a point of order, Chair. Honorable Mukwili, Honorable Mukwili, I'm not going to allow you to continue debating. But you can't floor. allow Smith uh, uh, to honorable mislead Mukwili, listen South to Africa. Me. Listen to me, Smith Honorable Mukwili. Smith is misleading honorable South Mukwili. Africa. Honorable Mukwili, I'm not going to allow you to continue to debate from the floor. You will have your... It is his time to, for debate. Honorable Mukwili, take your seat. Take your seat, Honorable Mukwili. I am giving you a warning, Honorable Mukwili. If you, can con if you can continue to do this, I'm going to request you to go out. Now I want to continue with the, with the, the business of the day. Point of order, please. Hey, Honorable Julius, what point is the of point? Order. What is the point of order? Jefferson, last time you said there, I did almost nothing and you sent me out. Honorable Mukwele is disrupting the house since we... Honorable, Honorable Julius, Honorable, Honorable Julius, Honorable Julius, you know very well that you were wrong that time when I was taking you out. And then now we are done with the matter, you want to take us back. We cannot allow you, Honorable, Honorable Julius. Please allow the house to continue, Honorable Julius. Honorable Julius, I'm addressing you. Continue, Honorable Smith. Thank you, Honorable Chair. And they can take it away from you at any time because it's not yours. Let's just look at what they are already doing with RDP houses, EPWP jobs, jobs at the municipalities, food parcels and tenders, which they already Honorable, control. Honorable Smith, your leader is standing there. Why are you standing, Honorable Lausagen? Honorable Chair, on a point of order. What is the point the of order? The decorum of this house for the past 15 minutes was terrible. We cannot continue like this. That is and not I, a point of order, Honorable That Lamsakhan. is the point of order. Honorable Lamsakhan, that is not a point of order. Chaper. Honorable, Honorable Lamsakhan, I have addressed the matter. Please take your seat, Honorable Lamsakhan. Honorable Lamsakhan, take your seat. On, on, Honorable Lamsakhan, take your seat. Honorable Lamsakhan, if you, are, if you don't want to take your seat, Honorable Lamsakhan, take your seat. I am switching off the mic because you are out of order. Take your seat, Honorable Lamsakhan. Take your seat. Order, order, Honorable Members. Hon Honorable, Honorable Lamsakhan, take your seat. Uh, Honorable Lamsakhan, if you don't want to take your seat, I will request you to, to go out. Honorable Lamsakhan, Honorable Lamsakhan, I am going to request you to go out if you don't want to listen to the chair. Honorable Lamsakhan, Honorable Lamsakhan, for the last time, please take your seat. So you want to join them to be disrupting the house? You take your seat, Honorable Lamsakhan. Honorable, I'm, I'm requesting to go out now. Go out, the Honorable, Honorable Lamsakhan. Want to continue? Uh, the usher of the Black Rock. Usher of the, please assist me. 
Talk to the Honorable Lamskaken. Talk to Honorable Lamskaken. He's refusing to go out. The Honorable Lamskaken is continuing to refuse. Can I, can, you, can I please ask you to look for an assistant? Honorable Mukwini, Honorable Mukwini, order. You are not there. Honorable Mukwini. Honorable Mukwini. Honorable Mukwini. Honorable Mukwili, Honorable Mukwili, I'm going to request you to delete what we're doing now with your phone. Please delete. You cannot do that in the house. All right. Uh, I'm going to recognize. I'm going to recognize the Honorable uh, Member, Honorable Member Tablanch, and then the Honorable Member Kugwana. You will follow. Take your seat for now. Honorable Faba, you'll be the third one for now. Take your seat. Honorable Julius, you'll be the fourth one. Take your seat for now. And the honorable member, you'll be the last one. Take your seat. Okay. Why, why are you standing, honorable member? Chairperson, I'm standing on a point of order. What is your point of order? Chairperson, really on a point of order, I think it's proper to allow the person to tell you exactly what the point of order is. You haven't done that, Chairperson. And really, we cannot go on in this matter, in this way. And I'm appealing to you, Chairperson, allow the people, whoever it is, if, if it's the uh, EFF or the DA or whoever, just allow us to make our point of order, and then you can rule of that, on that. But we cannot go on like this. Uh, Thank you, Chairperson. Hon Honorable Tablanche, you are debating my ruling. I have listened to the Honorable Member. She did not stand on a point of order. I ruled on the matter. So you are totally out of order. If ever we are still going to, to speak on the very same matter, Honorable Chibukwana, I will request you to allow the House to continue. Honorable Chairperson. Order, Honorable Members. Honorable, Honorable Isaac. Honorable Isaac. The, on, the Honorable Member is on the floor and she's protected. Okay, continue. Honorable Chairperson. I was going to ask and plead from you to be consistent in your ruling. We, you must treat us irrespective of party affiliation equally. You seem to be biased and you do, you, you're doing this to this uh, member of a party and you're doing this and I want equality uh, uh, as a presiding officer to, to give it Honorable a long Mbambo racial. Shibukwana, yes. thank you very much. You are totally out of order and you are accusing me. I am consistent. Honorable Faber. Consistent. If you are consistent, Mukweli will have Honorable Faber. The Honorable Member is protected, Honorable Faber. Honorable Mukweli. Honorable Mukweli. Honorable Mukweli. Allow the Honorable Faber to say whatever he wants to say. And you, Honorable Isaac. Thank you. Chairperson, uh, on the point of order, Honorable Julius was saying that he was removed by you. Where let me remind you, let me remind you then. The Honorable Julius called the member who was debating a stupid, and that is unparliamentary. That is why he left the house. Uh, right. Can Chair, we, can Chair, we please Chairperson, can I, can I just, can, can I just I want you to remind, say, you see, look what he's doing. Chair, Chairperson, when, when Honorable Julius was addressing you. Order. 
You were putting his mic off on his point of order, Chairperson. Because I heard what he was saying. No, Chairperson. Now, what you is your point of order? I'm still waiting to hear the leader, your point of order. The leader of you. the Democratic Alliance was making, trying to make a point of order. You cut her off as well, Chairperson. When the Honorable Member of the EFF was talking, you left it on. You left it on, Chairperson. That's inconsequent. And Chairperson, I, I cannot stand under your leadership as Chairperson when, when the House runs like that. Order, order. Honorable, I, honorable I, Faber. Chairperson. Honorable Faber. Chairperson. When a member is on his feet, are you going to allow the circus here? Chairperson, you're not consequent. Who are you calling circus? Who are you calling circus? Who are you calling circus? Chairperson, you, uh, you allow... you. You are allowing the decorum of the House. It's been going out. Honorable Labuskagni tried to help. But Honorable Chair, you allow this to go on. And I will not sit in the House under this regulation. The Honourable Members are still... Honourable Isaac, it's your time. It is your time, Honourable Isaac. Please stand up and say whatever you want to say. Honourable Mukwele. Honourable Mukwele, I'm giving you a last warning. If you continue to do that, you will go out. Chairperson, <laughs> with absolute... Honourable Mukwele. Continue, Honourable Isaac. Honorable Isaac. Chairperson. Hmm? <laughs> Continue, Honorable Isaac. Chairperson. I will. Continue, Honorable Isaac. Chairperson, I'm trying to continue. If you can just get these people to calm down so we can, I can make my point. With due respect to the decorum of the House. You are protected, Honorable Isaac. And continue. to your position as chair. Madam uh, Honorable Chairperson, you are allowing and have allowed this house to degenerate. And accept that, please. Honorable, All Honorable we're asking Lisa, you is to take control. Lisa, that is those of us that are out of it's control. It's not a point of order. Then it's what the is the point of order? It's that your Honorable Members Yes, but you're shutting about. us up one at a time. You're shutting us down and you're going to probably shut my mic now. If no, it, what if, do you want if, us if to if do? If you continue to do that, I'll shut the, the mic off. Honorable Chairperson, but do you think that the decisions you've been making are consistent? That is all I want to ask you. I'm not, I'm not debating with you. You decide. I'm not going to, resp to respond Why? to that. You Why know not? the procedure. If ever you don't want to take whatever I'm doing here, please follow the, follow the correct procedure, Honorable Isaac. The Honorable, Honorable Julius. Thank you, uh, presiding officer. I suggest that the whip take action of this house and remove you as presiding officer. You've been biased. You've been compromising other members on behalf or the, to the benefit of the EFF. Three members that's disrupting this house the whole day. I think the whip must take charge and remove you. We can get a better competent presiding officer because this debate is very important for South Africans because land is an emotive issue and you are disrupting this house. And I think deliberately because you are afraid to take charge of, of, of Honorable Mukwele. On, honorable, you are honorable, Julius, honorable, Julius, honorable Julius, Honorable Julius, Honorable Julius, Honorable Julius, Honorable Julius, Honorable Julius. You are taking the chair, the integrity of the chair, Honorable, Honorable Julius, I'm going to request you to take your seat. We are done with the matter. You know the procedure. Honorable member, you are the last one. Chairperson, thank you very much. I'm standing on Rule 53, where according to Rule, 3, Rule 53, a member may speak in the council to a point of order. Honorable Labas Kachni was standing on a point of order, and Chairperson, you refused her to speak. So I'd like to refer your ruling to the rules and ethics, please, Chair, and that you can then be consistent with your rules, because the EFF should have been removed when they were disruptive. And then can I go, Chair, you must allow me to go to... Um, 
uh, a, a, mem a presiding officer may order a member to leave the chamber. This is Rule 37. If a member is deliberately contravening a provision, which Honorable Labaskagni did not do, if a member is in contempt or disregarding the authority of the chair, which the EFF has been doing the whole afternoon, you have not ruled on them, and when a member's conduct is grossly disorderly, which is an exact example of the EFF, and you have not acted on that. So can we please refer this to the rules and ethics? The Honorable uh, Member, Rule number 53 says a member may speak in the council when called by the officer presiding of which that one I did. B, to a point of order, the Honorable Lauskachen was debating from the floor. We are continuing. Continue, Honorable Smith. Thank you, Chair. Let's just look at what they're already doing with RDP houses, EPWP jobs, jobs at the municipalities, uh, uh, food parcels and tenders, which they already control. They use it to manipulate the people and enrich themselves. You only get any of the above if you pay bribes, chocho, are a close friend or relative, a part of the political a politically connected elite, or even worse, offer sex in exchange for favors. Which, with this, uh, with this kept in mind, can you imagine what will happen if the same people have the power to say who gets the land and for how long? The DA says no. We will ensure that order. every family Honorable get Smith. at least one title Honorable deed. Smith, order, order. Uh, they take your seat. Honorable member, you are standing. Uh, I want you to rule on the statement of sexual favors. A sordid behavior of an individual cannot be generalized to the ANC because the first statement, honorable member, on the podium was referring to the ANC. I want you to rule on that. Let me ascertain first, were you referring to the ANC, Honorable Smith? Honorable Chair, I was referring to government and the function within government. Okay, so you're referring to the ANC? No, but it's in government. So, so you're referring to the government, you're not referring to the party? Honorable Chair, can I function. repeat what I said? Please. Okay, I Take was. Seat, I was saying, you only get any of the above if you pay a bribe, chocho, or are a close friend or relative, a part of the politically connected elite, or even worse, or offer sex in exchange for favors. That's a reality, che. That's a reality. Uh, okay, continue. I'll come back with the ruling. Continue. With this kept in mind, can you imagine what will happen if the same people have the power to say who gets the land and for how long? The DA says no. We will ensure that every family get at least one title deed. The slogan, one title deed, one family. And one family, one title deed. In tribal areas, the people will also get a title deed with full ownership of the Honourable residential Honourable stand. Honourable and Honourable not Honourable just Honourable occupation Honourable rights, Honourable but Smith. actual ownership. A DA Honourable government Smith. will ensure... Honourable Smith, take your seat. I want uh, to check if Honourable Smith will take a question. Oh. Let's ascertain first. Honourable Smith, he is not ready, Honourable Mukwele. Continue, sir. She's been disrupting me the whole day because something is hurting very deep inside. In, a DA government will ensure proper rural development by investing in massive infrastructure development like railway lines, proper roads and communication networks that link rural communities to towns and cities. Just imagine there is a train station clo close to you in your village with a rail railway line that link you 
to other villages, farming areas, mines, towns, cities, industrial areas, and international ports. This will make it possible for you to either start a small business or all along this railway network, or transport your products to, uh, um, to areas where they can be sold easily. If you want to go and look for a job in the cities, you can easily jump on the train and come back home regularly. This is the dream we as the DA have for our rural communities, where you also become an insider, a working individual that can look after your own family, on, build on your own house. Ruler, you cannot join them. Build your own house and even later buy your own car and have full ownership of everything you worked for. A DA government will ensure that rural communities feel safe where they live or work by establishing reliable rural safety units and proper policing services. We can no longer stand by while our farmers, farm workers and rural villagers are robbed tortured and murdered. It is outrageous that we are hearing about these gruesome crimes on a weekly basis. Honorable ministers, year in and year out, we see how your budget is being cut, and this is becoming a phenomenon. It is clear that the ANC is not serious about agriculture, forestry and fisheries, or rural development and land reform. In fact, the ANC do not care about the welfare of our rural communities. They only use them for their votes. While I, I have news for you, ANC, these communities are starting to see right through you. They, and they are moving away from you at an alarming rate. They can see you are not taking them seriously. Just, let's just look at land reform as an example. At the current rate and budget allocation, it will take the NC government more than 200 years to finalize the new claims. And that can only happen after another 10 years from now of finalizing the old outstanding claims. This while the NC government spent more uh, money per year on VIP protection services than land reform. The DA will make sure that we put the, mon that we put the money where our mouths are and invest much more money in the highly important and emotive issue in our quest to fast-track reconciliation in a truly fair South African society. We will also make use of the opportunity to distribute underutilized and vacant sta uh, state-owned land of which there's 20 million hectares amongst South Africans without property. This will go hand in hand with a title deed and all the ne necessary services. Fisheries remain a yeah, disaster. The ANC have a terrible record when it comes to the administration of the fisheries sector. These fishing communities are failed at all levels, and this due to greed and corruption under the ANC. This is why the DA will see to it that fishers get individual fishing rights with proper access to markets to sell their catch. This will give them the dignity, sense of independence, and control over their own livelihoods. We will also invest in both saltwater and freshwater aquaculture initiatives, as well as hydroponics, to give these communities alternatives and to keep up with the demand of fishing products, as well as to curb depleting natural fishing stocks, which is also a consequence of the NC maladministration of this critical industry. Fellow South Africans, Let's have hope again. Let's dream big again. Let's you, let's, let us build one South Africa for all. 2019 is our chance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Smith. The Honorable Member Pakis, on your point of order. Uh, the Honorable Member, unfortunately, made a generic statement because he did not refer to 
the, the name of the political party. So we continue. Um, honorable members, I want you to note that there are some changes on our speakers list. Number five will be Honorable Gayla, and the number seven is going to be Honorable Kony. Number nine has been cancelled. Number 13 is Honorable Kaula. Uh, I shall now call on the Honorable Gayla. Honorable Chairperson, I'll go direct to Honorable Minister Zogwana from Kaiwa. The 2018 budget allocation for Pigari projects is skewed towards certain provinces at the expense of poor provinces. The Eastern Cape is one of the provinces which has been neglected in this area. Patieswa, we are Zazia, Eastern Cape. He called we are last Banaban by Pabayal Tan. A band by a tan was for Yak. Go away, John, let some of our man in this regard. Secondly, uh, the, lo the location for funds for irrigation schemes. Uh, I've been monitoring this for the cu last couple of years. Basically, in the Eastern Cape, you've been dealing with two irrigation schemes, which is Kamata. The question is, the, what about the other areas in the provinces? You know very well it's a very poor province. Uh, one would suggest that these resources must be spread all over the province. We advise that the starting point may be to revamp collapse schemes across the province. There are quite a lot of them from the former uh, TBB states. You know that very well. It would be very well to revamp them. Uh, while assisting the emerging ones. It is a futile to encourage small emerging farmers when they are unable to access the very basic, the basic requirement water. So you cannot expect expect so let us be fair on that one. Agriculture. Uh, I think I spoke to you about uh, last time in the previous years where in Agambo agriculture is that Eastern Cape, Yemsbeck, Oyster Farm in Emsbeck, Bay Pai. What about the big oceans? And about Naban Batlupegai, Usugele Moon, Rio Changa, Pagul Sigisi. What plans? Let's forget about the plans. When are you going to allocate projects to those areas? Because there you're dealing with the poorest of the poor. Land care projects. Uh, the allocation of 10.9 million, I a minister, um, Tlabu Pelil, Indong, Yazaz, now in Jungut Hilpire, Banu Beta Bagonob, all over Zindong, Agupel. And they can create jobs as well, these land, land care projects. So we, we think that Tubana Nog, Funaga Utet, and Aba Pete, or Ubana Nog, or Mabai Jong, a long delay. Sit Lu Lega Band Bagut, Sit Lu Lessing Mamil. Expropriation of land without compensation is supported by the UDM. Furthermore, we say that the economy of this country cannot remain skewed to a certain minority. We cannot allow that. That cannot be allowed. That is why the UDM is calling for an economic indaba. We cannot allow. Furthermore, this is the department, Banbagut. This is the department. You left us two minutes, honorable member. I think we have to touch again, ma'am. We are better about that. Not touch. That is why I am reminding you. Uh, furthermore, Uban and Kumbula, 1948, Utada Guma They were very pure. They were too What they done, Banyo Selaban Babu, where they gave them schemes, where they got lower rates at the banks. That is what you should be doing. Lastly, when you give big project to the big fish. They swallow a small guy which, are, which, which you encourage as subcontractors. Let the subcontracting my pay 
deal direct with our people. Don't make them subcontracted to these big companies. Don't know what to do. But in the minister, land claims, minister, I spoke to you, go to the people. Do not rely on your officials. I've got several, we, we communicate together. Please go to the people. What is happening down there is very, very bad. They are going to tell them that they are going to be the minister. They are going to tell them that they are going to be the minister. They are going to be the minister. The Honorable R.T. Mtembu, MEC of Agriculture and Rural Development from Gozul Natal. Thanks. Uh, members of NCOP, Honorable Minister of uh, Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, uh, Senzeni Zogwana, Honorable Minister of Rural Development, the Honorable Nkwane Mashabane, all deputy uh, ministers, uh, and all MECs who are present uh, here, special delegate, distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen. As I, I begin, allow me to remind us of the ideals of freedom as was pronounced in 1955 Freedom Charter by the Congress of the People, I quote, we, the people of South Africa, declare for all our country and the world to know that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white, and that no government can justify claim authority unless it is based on the will of the people. That our people have been robbed of their birthright right to land, liberty and peace by a form of government founded on injustices and equality. Close quote. And on land it was declared, I quote, the land shall be shared among those who work in it. Restriction of land ownership on a racial basis shall be ended and all the land redivided amongst those who work it to banish famine and land hunger. The state shall help the peasants with implement seeds, tractors, dams to save the, the soil and assist the tillers. Freedom of movement shall be guaranteed to all who work on the land, and all shall have the right to occupy the land whatever they choose. People shall not be robbed of their cattle, and forced labor and farm prison shall be abolished." Close quote. It was further, this democratic government, who in the Reconstruction Development Program, multi of 1994, decisively anchored that, I quote, no political democracy can survive and flourish if the mass of our people remain in poverty without land, without tangible prospect for a better life." Close quote. What becomes clear through both these directives and commitment is that radical economic transformation will require a bold and robust changes in the ownership of land. We must constantly be mindful that failure to resolve the question of land will translate into our failure to address the crippling challenges of poverty, inequality, and joblessness among the poor and the previously disadvantaged people of uh, South Africa. As per the resolution of the 54th uh, African National Congress Conference, I call to mass pursue with great determination the program of land reform and rural development as part of the program of radical socio-economic transformation. Expropriation of land without compensation should be among the key mechanisms available to government to give effect to land reform and redistribution, close quote. The Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform, the Honorable Maite Kwana Mashabane, during the delivery of her 2018 departmental budget speech was accurate in articulating that the land issue must be addressed hand in hand with an inexcusable lack of access to water by the majority of black, rural, and privacy disadvantaged communities in our country. We must, in addition, applaud the announcement 
uh, made by the Honorable Kwana Mashabane to introduce the regulation of the Agricultural Land Bill. This bill will, in the long run, speed up land reform, avail land to the poor, and previously disadvantaged and redistribute wealth by introducing land ceilings on agricultural land. Honorable Chairperson, the KwaZulu Natal Department of Agriculture and Rural Development is currently engaged in the development of an agricultural development master plan for the province. We therefore welcome the release of phase one of the private land audit, which was part of the state land audit of 2012, as this outcome will fundamentally assist us in ensuring the master plan is an all-encompassing plan that will function as a vehicle to drive and position agriculture as a catalyst for the growth and economic development in the province. As, we, as was shared by the Minister for Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, uh, the Honorable Senzeni Zogwan in his 2018 budget vote speech, the agriculture, forestry and fisheries sector in South Africa economy sustained growth despite decreasing uh, budget allocation and the persistent drought in some parts of the country. In the fourth quarter of 2017, South Africa experienced a highest growth rate with the economy expanding by 3.1% quarter on quarter and agriculture contributed 0.8% to the 3.1% growth in the country's gross domestic product. It was this significant contribution to the GDP at a consistent rate that had aided the South African economy out of a technical recession. Given this, it is therefore suffices to say the agricultural sector must be made a key national priority as was undertaken in the African Union's 2003 Maputo Declaration on Agriculture and Food Security. African heads of state and government, inclusive of South Africa, committed 10% of budget allocation allocations to agriculture and rural development policy implementation within five years, a commitment we are yet to meet. Honorable Chairperson, as the KZN Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, we are in agreement with the Honorable uh, Mr. Zogwana that the highest level of agricultural productivity in South Africa can be realized through substantial investment in agricultural research and development that conservatively promotes equitable growth in the sector. You are proof, left five minutes, MEC. Proof of such investment is evident in our department through the growth of the Jankawe Mushroom prog Program, which was largely facilitated through a collaboration between our research and development unit and the People's Republic of China. It is also relevant to note that as a province, we have already committed in this financial year that we will strengthen our research and development facilities in the department and ensure that they are relevant and accessible, particularly marginalized and previously disadvantaged communities. This will also respond to our concentration on strategies and progress of the indigenous traditional uh, crop massification. I hope I'm still in t on time. You are left with four minutes now. Honorable Chairperson of the uh, NCOP, aquaculture and inland fishing present particularly rural communities with a vehicle for food security, poverty reduction, job creation, and rural development. As the KZN province, we await with great enthusiasm the speedy finalization of the aquaculture bill recently presented to the cabinet, as this will propel our intention to build a sustainable aquaculture industry that will substantially support our food and nutrition security strategy in the province. We will play a leading role in the support of the National Department of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries in increasing the aquaculture production uh, to 20,000 tons, thus creating an additional 2,500 direct jobs and 15 jobs in the value chain by 2019. Inland fishing has proven a challenge for many of our poor people uh, and protein deficient people in Guazunatal. We were recently shocked by the reports of a young man who was murdered while searching for a bait to fish in a dam situated inside a farm in Eshawe. This was a man uh, fishing for subsistence purposes as he came from a household where nobody is employed. Similarly, incidences have been reported in other parts of the 
province. It is therefore for this reason that we continue to make the clarion call for the immediate transformation of the sector to accommodate the poor and the previously um, marginalized. We view the National Department working for fisheries program as a positive step towards the transformation of the fishing sector in, in its entirety. Honorable Chairperson, as, uh, as said by the Honorable Zogwana, government investment into the agriculture to create favorable and supportive environment for farmers, particularly subsistence smallholder producers, has not yet yielded the desired outcomes of the ensuring the meaningful participation of black producers in the agricultural, forestry, and fishery value chains. In Guazulu Natal, we began a process to rationalize and amalgamate entities as per cabinet resolution, and this process will be completed in the current financial year. In closing, allow me to express our relentless support to both the Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries, the Honorable Senzeni Zogwan, and the Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform, Honorable Maite Kwane Mashabane. As a province, we remain committed to the obligation to ensure that we honor the former president, Nelson Mandela, and Mama U Alpertina Sisul by continuing with an agrarian revolution and a rural development strategy that will change the lives of the people uh, we serve in a meaningful uh, way. And uh, with that input, we support both uh, budget speech, and I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable MEC. The Honorable Member Pony. Honorable Chair, debate and then forestry, agriculture, at its land summit two weeks ago, the ANC suggested that it was a possibility that it would not support the amending of the constitution so that land can be expropriated without compensation. This is therefore the perfect time to remind the ANC and all other parties in this house who have yet to be convinced I think it's one party besides the ANC, why the, the constitution must be amended so that land can be expropriated without compensation. Since 1652, white colonialists have stolen the land of our people. It started in the Cape, and that is a fact. Followed by wars of conquest, where throughout the country, white settlers who took land despite fierce resistance by the barrels of their guns. This process of land dispossession slowly became legalized, and one of the first pieces of legislation passed was the Glen Grey Act of 1894. The Glen Grey Act was followed by the Natives Land Act of 1913, which legally enshrined the unequal ownership of land in this country, with the African majority limited to only 7% of all land in South Africa. The Urban Areas Act was passed in 1923 to prevent Africans from owning land in urban areas of South Africa followed by the Native Land Act and the Group Areas Act. The Group Areas Act of 1950 was the final piece of legislation that solidified the legal possession of, land, of stolen land. These wars and laws saw theft of the land of our people across all nine provinces of this, South, of this uh, country. When the ANC took power in 1994, it agreed to the principle of willing seller to address the consequences of the theft of our land. Since then, the South African government has spent billions of rents buying back Honorable stolen Pony. land. Please take your seat. Honorable Smith. Honorable um, Chair, House Chair, I just want to hear if the Honorable Connie is prepared to take a question from me. Honorable Connie, are you prepared to take a question? Uh, yes. Tell He's me ready. Quick. Can you please tell us in South Africa who is your people? and who's not your people? Uh, that is not a question, but let me just give him an answer. Our people is the hopeless, the poor of the poorest. That's our people. Yes. Thank you. Yes. 
20, 24 years later, the ANC has nothing to show for this. You're the 2017. Six seconds, Mama. Six seconds. I had. I have got nine minutes. It's wrong that one. So maybe oh. I've got. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's fine. This is this is one of the, this is the only crucial uh, progressive five debate minutes. in all these debates five today. Min five thank, minutes. Thank you. Correction. Twenty-four years later, the ANC has nothing to show for this. The 2017 land audit um, revealed once again how so little has changed and how the current constitutional framework does not allow to meaningful land re redistribution. The land audit found that 72% of private land in South Africa is owned by whites. 15% by coloreds, 5% by Indians, and 4% by blacks. If you go to provinces, you get true idea of how bad the situation is. In the Northern Cape, where I come from, 94% of land is privately owned. In the Free State, it's 91% that is privately owned. Western Cape, 89%, and is privately owned. And also in Northwest, it's 71%. Land is privately owned, and this pattern repeats itself across our country. We must put a stop to this. If ANC cannot do it, then move, the EFF will do it. If we continue within the current constitutional setup, it will take us hundreds of years before we see any meaningful land redistribution. As the EFF, we believe in the idea of economic freedom in our lifetime, and we do not have a hundreds of years. It is why the first cardinal pillar of the EFF, that is expropriation of land without compensation, for equal redistribution. And for this to happen, section 25 of the Constitution needs to be amended. We said we offer our 6%, but you refuse. The expropriation of land by the state of equal redistribution will be fundamental to the total liberation of our people and our society as a whole. You just saw the behavior of the, the, the elites in this house when we debate the issue of land, their behavior. And will and must, must be of the will and must be of particular benefit to women of our country who continue to be the most oppressed in our society. We are tired of our husbands having the title deeds on their names. It must change. For only, one, for only ones of these women in, this, in the country own, our land will be truly free. We therefore reject the budget vote of the Department of Rural Development, Ref, Land Reform, as a reminder to the ANC that it has failed to redistribute land, and that only way forward is expropriation of land without compensation and no negotiations. We also reject the budget of the Department of Agriculture and Forestry and Fisheries because, uh, listen, Minister, the Department and government has done nothing to realize the potential of agriculture in this country, not only because it has not expropriated land without compensation, but because the ANC has done too little to nothing to protect our agricultural industry. The industry is the most constricted of the industries we have in this country, where a few commercial farmers and agro-processing industries control the entire agrar agrarian value chain. This starts at the level of control of the seed industry. The control of the seed industry is at the hands of Pana and Monsanto who controls about 90% of the commercial seed market you in this country, two minutes. giving them power to, la to a large degree to determine seed access type and cost in the country. As the farm level, we have seen a reduction of the number of farms from over 60,000 in 1993 to just about 35,000 today. This has been a result of consolidation by those who have more money and who can compete at the, at the global level without government support and subsidies. Only 20% of these farms produce about 80% of the food we have as a nation, while the rest, including our communal farmers, produce less than 20% of the food we produce as, as a nation. On top of expro expropriating land without compensation to redistribute land, government should have been protecting and supporting small scale, supporting them with input products such as seats and equipment, while also giving them access to markets so that they can compete with large-scale commercial farmers. At, at the same time, government has to be placing tariffs on, imp important, on imported uh, agri agricultural products that, our, that produce could compete with cheaper imported uh, products. If this was done, it would, it would benefit the small-scale fruit farmers in KZN and Mpumalanga. 
the livestock farmers in the Free State and the Northern Cape, and the vegetable farmers in the Western Cape and Limpopo. But our government has never had the political will and has continued with its failed neoliberal economic approach to agriculture. And why we reject, and this is why we reject the budget vote of Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Minister Nkwindi, Rekopa implementation, Utlokoloku praise for doing your job. You cannot, you cannot praise a fish for swimming. Minister Nkwana Mashaban, you spoke on the issue of uh, not having land and people not having a place to be buried at. It's worse. It's even, it's even worse than that. And I wanted you to say it on record that but what happened to my bit? Mokosi, what happened to my bit? Le mokwele, le chabangu, le mutla shopping. And eh, yaka ba tuwa bancho. Haro, haro nzi elo, haro na dignity. Rana ba bangre perform the ritual, se disturb. Wake ma dlozi abo mokwele, what happened to labo mokos? Abo mokosi ke taka taka. That is fact. You do mal nalo ena ka go expropriate land without compensation la isur EFF ke yone it leng ka yone le re bolella ka freedom chata ele tsile la lahlela matlakaleng go mpeno le batla ga phe go tsoga ka pelo tsoga ro betsi lo tabo ga lo re ke nyena lo tleng ka khang e the EFF leads and that is a fact honorable koni na go go ifedile ene ka mo rena le honorable minister zokwana isi isi honorable minister nkwint We proceed. Uh, I shall now call on the Deputy Minister of Land Reform, Honorable Squatcher. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. Aba pati sabo babi ni ngoke liba usoko ana no mama maite ngwa na mashaban deputy minister sabo babi ni ba o usfi sopteles mumu mumu shaka dami members of the NCOP. And all the members from the respective provinces. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very difficult afternoon here in this house. I really want to, to join everybody and my colleagues to say I'm pleased to be amongst you, difficult as it is, but to participate in this very, very critically important debate which is about uh, rural development and land reform and the question of land in particular. Just a little bit of education for both the Honorable Smith and uh, our Honorable members from the EFF. You see, you do not, Honorable Wakwili, need to apologize when you say the land was stolen. In fact, you, you are being very, very tame. It's incorrect. The land was taken by brutal force. You see, anything, anything that you steal, you steal when people cannot see you. Our forefathers, were killed. They were made slaves in their own country. So you can't say it was stolen. It was taken by brutal force. And the Freedom Charter does address that. The ruling party is poised to address this historical matter once and for all. And everyone with an opinion is trying to influence us to do it in their own terms. Some people have crossed our borders, like the Afri Forum looking for foreign solutions to this matter, whilst others are actually playing to the gallery, trying to enhance their electoral prospects. Guided by the resolutions of the ruling party in Nasrek in February, in February 2018, the National Assembly passed a resolution which enabled the formation of the Constitutional Review Committee. His Excellency, President Ramaphosa, in January 2018, 
when he presented to the nation the January 8th statement on behalf of the ruling party, said, I quote, this year as we celebrate the centenary of the birth of Nelson Kholishatla Mandela, we shall redouble our efforts to build a society in which black poverty and white privilege are consigned to the past, replaced by respect, solidarity, and a non-racial non equality, close quotes. Honorable Chair, as the ruling party, we have always argued that we should approach our work with revolutionary discipline and within the confines of the law. We say so not because we are cowards. We say so because we are building a country and we want peace in our country. We also say so because we know the effects of war. We know what it does to communities. That is why in the preamble of our constitution, we find the following paragraph. I quote again, we the people of South Africa recognize the injustice of our past. Honor those who suffered for justice and freedom in our land. We therefore, through our freely elected representatives, adopt this supreme law of the Republic so as to heal the divisions of the past. Close quotes. I, I actually invoke this declaration today to reach out to everybody and all parties represented in this house. The time is now for us to rise and embrace this process under, under review. The issue of the land must be addressed, whether one likes it or not. It is a known fact that indigenous people of this country were dispossessed of their land, as I have already indicated. This, that our president called the original seal, was consolidated with the formation of the Union of South Africa in 1910 and ultimately the passing of the Native Land Act of 1913, as Honorable Spago indicated earlier. The late former president of the Republic, Uba Umatiba, in his speech at the occasion of the adoption of the Constitution in 1996, said this to say, I quote him, we strike out along a new road in which the preoccupation of elected reps at all levels of government will be how to cooperate in the service of the people rather than competing for power which otherwise belong to the people in any case, close quotes. It is our submission as the ruling party that now is another opportunity for us to walk side by side along this new road of exploring peaceful means of addressing the land question. You are left with four minutes, Deputy Minister. This year we're also celebrating the centenary of the birth of another icon, Umama U Albertina Sisulu. In doing so, we want to make sure that we participate, South Africans must participate in this particular process and we must have no illusions. Expropriation of land without compensation is going to happen in South Africa and we will do this not recklessly, not through land grabs, but through providing land that is agriculturally correct and better housing for our people so that we can create equality. We cannot allow a situation in South Africa where others die of hunger while others die of overeating. And, and, such people, and such people get determined by the color of their skins. So ladies and gentlemen, I really want to join my minister in saying, let us move forward, let us soldier on. Our people are intolerant and their intolerance is well understood. Let us make sure that ultimately, what generations of generations have been yearning for is achieved in our lifetime and we actually deliver a lasting solution for generations to come. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. We proceed to number 10, the Honorable Nita. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. 
uh, our ministers present, Honorable Zokwana and Honorable uh, Mama. And also the deputies that are present. Chair, let me start first by apologizing profusely to members at the gallery as well, to those that are listening to us at home for what has happened in this house this afternoon. And we promise you that we'll be persuading each other and make sure that our rules, we apply them in a manner that is really fitting us as honorables. Uh, let me go then to my speech, starting with Honorable Smith. Ndagwetu, aizo chinja lendo eti, umshaba uza kuwaamba uye ebantwini wabiwe kukulinga nayo. The resolution the African National Congress that cannot change. The ikona ke indenge komnandi le, kodwa ke masiva nenga londo ukuba iza kwenzeka. Diege ngo kukulendo oti African National Congress akukondo eye nzileyo. We shall work to rekindly Mandiba's vision of a democratic society in which all citizens have equal opportunities determine their own destiny. We shall achieve this not only through strengthening the instruments of preparative and participatory democracy, but also ensuring that people have economic opportunities and ability to make choices about their own lives. This message from the ANC NEC delivered, this is the message by the ANC NEC delivered in its 2018 January 8th statement has particularly relevance to today's policy budget vote debate. This debate is about our people, their connectedness to the land, the sea and the forest and their economic struggle for a better life from natural endowment that our country is blessed with. As this will be the last occasion, we debate the budget votes in the fifth parliament. It would be important to evaluate where have we come from, our achievements and together with our people, examine what informs budget and programs. We began our term of office with a mandate of the ANC 2014 elections manifesto, which laid out five pillar program. The first one is to increase investment in agriculture and infrastructure in support of all smallholder farmer development. Expand the food for all program as part of the national integrated food and nutrition policy for procuring and distribution affordable essential foodstuff directed to poor communities. Finalize and implement the agricultural policy action plan. Strengthen agricultural production and agro industries and promote food security. Roll out and expand aquaculture projects both, enhance job creation, promote access to high protein food, strengthen agricultural college education through skills development fund. We can probably say as the African National Congress that on all five pillars of the ANC manifesto, we have made significant progress. The program that emerged is in response to food security, the Fetzatala, integrated food production aimed to place one million hectare under production. And the ANC government has increased the number of hectares of productive communal land under production with initial focus of the production of food staples such as maize, meal, potatoes, sunflower, and vegetables. The latest production figures indicate a positive look. At household level, program continue to be introduced to reduce number of people that are vulnerable to hunger, 
Food insecure household continue to be supported with star packs for establishing food gardens, and food gardens have been established across all regions and in provinces. In order to improve land use in communal areas, projects continue to implement under the Animal and Felt Management Program. The program is aimed at a soil rehabilitation, regreening, and environmental and spatial decongestion. Existing program continue to be rolled out by the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, which cover fam farming implement fencing, uh, fertilizer seeds, tractors, and a, range, and a range of service design to meet specific requirements. Whilst the question of the lack of adequate extension officers has been a challenge, over the MTF, there, are, there has been a steady increase in the intake of trainee and extension officers in agricultural colleges. The irrigation strategy aimed at increasing the number of hectares under the irrigation by smallholder producers as proposed in the NDP is being expanded. Smallholder production are supported through various initiatives, including comprehensive agricultural support program, uh, Ilima Itzima, with regard financing support the intervention of blended fencing partnership with land bank lays out a strategic intervention on how blended fencing for smallholder producers will be managed. See our hope. ANC resolved in its 14th manifesto that well-trained and well-equipped extension support caters are critical to the support success of smallholder farmers development of rural villages and implementation of government policies. Subsequently, the system has been reinvigorated, retaining existing extension officers and integrated unemployed agricultural graduates into the system. Provincial Extension Coordinators Forum are operational in all nine provinces, as these are aligned to the Agricultural Policy Action Plan key outputs on the development of platform to knowledge sharing on best extension and farming practices. The PECFs enhance improved focus collaboration and coordination between government institutions, organized agriculture, non-governmental organization, and civic association that are involved with producer and development program. We have four minutes left. Progress on forestry and natural resources management. 100 hectares have been planted in temporal un unplanted areas. 300 hectares on state indigenous forests have been rehabilitated. More than 24,000 hectares of agricultural land has been rehabilitated. The climate change adaptation and mitigation plan for agricultural forestry and fisheries has been approved. Progress on fisheries. Nine aquaculture projects were supported through Operation Pagisa. Application forms for Apalon fishing rights allocated were assessed by the Apalon assessment team. The Aquaculture Development Bill granted permission to the department to proceed with the submission of the bill to cabinet. 6,700 compliances and enforcement measures in six prioritized fishery sectors were implemented to deal with the matters such as poaching. On our approach to rural development and land reforms, informed by the need to land transformation with production discipline for, for food security, redirection the agrarian system to be inclusive, competitive, and developmental. Moreover, the ANC-led government has worked tirelessly to enhance support for smallholder and rural enterprise and to build on the potential for rural sustainable livelihood, particularly for African women. Sustainable land reforms is, co is coordinated, coordinated in the ANC Rural Economic Transformation Model. 
This provides a developmental transformation and strategic farmer support services program in improving food security, the agricultural policy action plan remain the key policy driver for intervention and inform the financing of the votes. Chairperson, we are therefore supporting both budget votes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The Honorable Schaefer. Honorable Ministers, Deputy Ministers, members of the NCOP, ladies and gentlemen, um, just for the record, it's during my time, I certainly um, would like to express my absolute um, distaste at members being dragged out of this house. Honourable Chairperson, small-scale fishing in the Western Cape is more than just a mere activity. The culture and history of the Western Cape's numerous small-scale fishing communities goes back centuries and retains practices which give these people a solid end identity and a way of life that has become synonymous with South Africa at large. Most importantly, fishing is the only remunerable skill that many of these fishermen and women possess, often the only means to put food on the table. Failure to protect and uphold such industries by the National Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries is to disallow the people of this province to use their skills and make an honest living. This is what we have repeatedly seen among small-scale fishing communities in the Western Cape. Despite much talk of transformation in the fishing sector, the fast tracking of fishing quotas and the tackling of abalone poaching in the Western Cape, very little has been done by the Department of Fisheries for our people. In October 2017, DAF launched the Fishing Transformation Council in the Western Cape. At the time, the department said it wanted to foster an inclusive and open opportunity fishing industry at every level of the supply chain. Mere months later, in February this year, the department openly defied its own Fishing Transformation Council by awarding fishing rights to Irvin and Johnson, sidelining side thousands of small-scale fishermen in our province without a fishing quota in favor of commercial fishing. The details surrounding the appointment of members to serve on the council remain murky to this day, and thousands of small-scale fishermen are still waiting to receive fishing quotas from the department. The reality is that the Fishing Transformation Council serves as yet an unnecessary administrative wing in a department which has been unable to allocate fishing quotas to small-scale fishing communities for the past 10 years. But honorable chairperson, it is this very failure by DAF which is at the root of a greater socioeconomic crime ravaging our province. Abalone poaching has transformed a once burgeoning industry into one run by international crime syndicates fueled by corruption and gangsterism. On the 25th of March this year, it was alleged in the media that President Jacob Zuma accepted a 1 million rand cash bribe to keep you and you, Minister Sukwana, in your role in order to prioritize abalone processing and fishing permits for select companies in the Western Cape. And if this is not true, then Minister, I urge you to order an investigation to be able to clear your name. It is further alleged publicly that DAF Deputy Secretary General Sifakazi Ndodani, Kosata President Mr. Lamini, Minister Sokwane himself all received 300,000 Rand bribes from the Western Cape businessmen interested in the fishing industry for facilitating Honourable talks with Schaefer. former President Jacob Zuma. Honourable Schaefer, please take your seat. Um, Chief Whip. Madam Chair, I'm rising to to request that the member is making a serious charge implicating members sitting in this house and outside of this house without substantive, sub, a substantive motion. So I request you to rule on that. Thank you, Chief Whip. I will rule right away. The member said if. Therefore, putting the question, she said if it is true, Minister, please clear. I think the minister must take that opportunity. Honorable Schaefer, please. Thank you, Chairperson, and this is public, uh, public knowledge. In the same month, nine marine inspectors from the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries were arrested for alleged involvement in an abalone poaching syndicate. 
it has become blatantly evident that this department itself is in some way, on some level, in collusion with illegal abalone trade to benefit its top brass, and the numbers are certainly staggering. A report published by Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network in early February revealed that an estimated 65% of South Africa's abalone imported to Hong Kong in 2015 was illicitly harvested and trafficked. We later received information from the Marine Anti-Poaching Unit in the Western Cape Overbergs region that DAF only responds to 44% of their poaching complaints along the coastline over the past year. In November this year, DAF openly admitted to Parliament that it does not have the resources to support the cooperatives at the heart of government's small-scale fishing policies, and that it only had three officials to patrol a coastline of 4,000 kilometers comprising of over 300 fishing communities. Honourable Chairperson, the evidence is mounting and it points to a department which has reneged on its duties severely in the Western Cape and has been tainted by the prospect of kickbacks from illegal abalone trade. And the people who suffer? The Western Cape's small-scale fishing communities, as gangs linked to foreign importers of illegal abalone claim our coastlines and infiltrate our communities, our communities are subjected to violence and severe poverty. The very same people who, who want the department to allow them to fish. I have submitted a comprehensive list of recommendations to fix the socio-economic crime in the Western Cape. And I submitted this report, and when it was tabled at the National, National Assembly, the document was merely tossed aside. I realize that in the past week, the department has committed to no longer storing confiscated abalone and will consider upgrading 12 small harbors in our province. But this is honestly just a drop in the ocean. When will this department realize the severity of this problem in the country's only province bordered by two oceans? We need urgent intervention. Abalone poaching is criminalizing entire communities, and we need you to take urgent action, Minister Sakwana, and we need it now. Honorable Chairperson, last year the High Level Report on Land published the following conclusions on its findings with regard to land reform and restitution in South Africa, and I quote, Experts advise that the need to pay compensation has not been the most serious constraint on land reform in South Africa to date. Other constraints, including increasing evidence of corruption by officials, the diversion of land reform budget to elites, lack of political will, and the lack of training and capacity has proven more serious stumbling blocks to land reform. I close quotes. The question must be asked, why is the ANC pushed for expropriation of land without compensation when the high-level report findings clearly state that land reform failures have nothing to do with compensation and everything to do with the ANC's own corruption and lack of political will at a national level? Just last week, replies to parliamentary questions posed to the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform have revealed the department and its entities have lost have nearly 20.7 million hectares of land. The reply further reveals that the department owns approximately 13.5 million hectares of land and has exclusive rights to another 2.2 million hectares. It furthermore states that the Ingon Yarmouth Trust Board owns approximately 2 million hectares and has exclusive rights to approximately 2.8 million hectares more. If the land area of South Africa is approximately 122.3 million hectares, this means that government has been in possession of a large chunk of land for the past 25 years, with which it has done nothing. In its bid to expropriate land without compensation, the ANC initially said it would push for Section 25 of the Constitution to be amended. The party then backtracked on this commitment this month. It seems the talk surrounding land expropriation without compensation is a convenient means for the ANC to make it fit as if it's rightly restoring land to the people while dithering on the issue for pure political gain. The reality is that at the time of tabling the high-level report, the budget for land reform was at an all-time low of less than 0.4% of the national budget, with less than 0.1% set aside for land distribution. The reality is that by 2014, the ANC had spent a combined 69 billion on land reform and redistribution with only a dismal 9% success rate to show for it. 
69 billion could have bought 58% of South Africa's productive agricultural land at market value, and this money could have gone down the, could have gone down the drain along with any hope black South Africans have of getting their land back from the ANC. This is what the ANC has done with our land. Honorable Chairperson, no matter what, no matter what anybody says in this house, the Western Cape has a proven 62% land reform success rate because we understand that giving land to people also means giving them title deeds, of which we have given thousands, and the skills necessary that, uh, that is needed to transform land into wealth. You cannot reverse the skewed land ownership patterns in South Africa if the state owns all the land. Yet this department continues to stockpile land while poor South Africans have no tangible form of generation wealth in the form of land ownership. South Africans must own land they work on or live on if our country's severe inequality has any chance of being reversed. Opportunity for land ownership brings people into the economy. It allows them access to finance and have a tangible asset that has value and means something. Land ownership can be left in perpetuity to families and becomes a step towards economic freedom. And if the land belongs to the people, then I ask this question again, why has the ANC held on to it for so long? I thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Deputy Minister for Rural Development, the Honorable Mashukul Lamini. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. My greetings to the Honorable Ministers who are present here, Minister Zowane and Minister Maite Nkwane Mashabane. The two Deputy Ministers are present here, MEC, members of the NSOP, esteemed guests, officials of the departments, ladies and gentlemen. Madam Chairperson, as the former president of the Republic, Nelson Prolitlatla Mandela, remind us, and I quote, everyone can rise above their circumstances and achieve success if they are dedicated to and passionate about what they are doing, close quote. Honorable members, our department's rural development initiatives and activities are very diverse, yet very focused on agrarian transformation that will lift our people up to the point where they can be productive in their own interest, thus energize both their own potential and that of the nation. In order to achieve all the above, we need land. Without the the land, both our people and the department cannot be able to address the triple challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Therefore, expropriation of land without compensation is a must for the nation to address all the above. Honorable members, as indicated by our minister in, in her speech, from this financial year 2018-19, the department will be taking a wide rural economic development focus through the implementation of a rural economic development zone. This will act as a catalyst for integrated rural economic transformation. The current agri-park being developed by the department will continue being among the key deliverables with the rural economic development zones. Through household profiling, communities will be actively mobilized to participate in planning identification and prioritization of development initiatives. Madam Chairperson, primary production is one of the key elements of the value chain that we want to pursue within the Agri-Park program. The department, in close collaboration with a variety of commodity association and research institution, is fully in pursuit of the process in which communities are engaged across commodity value chain and their commercial Markets. In 2018-19, the department is aiming to organize and establish three new cooperative finance institutes, one of the over 111 cotton cooperatives we have been supporting with improved production in Pumalanga, Limpopo, and Guazulu Natal. And to remind the House that at present we have got one CFI that is that is dealing with arts and craft in the department, which has already opened seven branches 
in provinces like Limpopo. Limpopo, there's one branch. Pumalanga, one branch. KZN, three branches. And Eastern Cape, two branches. Madam Chairperson, in 2018-19 financial year, we are working on delivering the following programs. 120 infrastructure projects in the nine provinces to support primary production in rural communities and the one household, one hectare sites with a budget of 263.5 million. 10 socioeconomic infrastructure projects for the revitalization of rural towns and villages with a budget of 275.5 million. Nine agri-hub will be made functional with a budget of 272.5 million set aside for the development of infrastructure and in 44 farm production support unit to support primary production at rural communities at the one household, one hectare site. From the 44 farm production support unit, 3,210 3, households participating in one household, one hectare site, 227 households participating in the one household, two dairy cow, and 208 enterprise will be supported with primary production input, mechanization, marketing, and extension services with a budget of 268 million. All of the above initiative will be contribute, will contribute to improve rural livelihood and job creation. 6,864 6, skills will be provided through the following program. 2,091 rural youth will be recruited and skilled through the NARISEC program with the allocation of 273 million. 4,773 people will be skilled in rural disaster management related field and enterprise utilizing 55.5 million. Honorable members, the commitment of the NDP require that they redoubled our efforts to radically transform our country's economy. We can no longer afford to be a country that relies on the production and export of primary commodities. We need to continue working to bring about structural change at two, and, at two interrelated levels. First, we need to be placed our productive sectors firmly at the heart of the new growth path that will move us up to the value chain. And secondly, we must significantly broaden the base of economic participation. In so doing, we will be able to achieve higher rate of inclusive growth. In this regard, therefore, the following projects and the following budgets are allocated to different provinces. In the Eastern Cape, we have allocated 29.6 million for Narisek, 160.9 million for REIT, Rural Enterprise Development, Rural Infrastructure Development, and 51.5 million for Rural Enterprise Development. In the Free State, we have allocated 32.7 Narisek, 60.7 million REIT, 29.8 million for REIT. In Gauteng, we have allocated 29.6 million for Narisek, 51 million for REIT, and 21.7 for REIT. In Guazulu Natal, we have allocated 21.6 million for Narisek, 161.6 million for rural infrastructure, and 66.1 million for rural enterprise. In Limpopo, we have allocated 29.6 million three minutes left. for Narisek and, and also um, for REIT and, 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 rural, and rural enterprise. In the Western Cape, as we have discussed in the committee, uh, honorable members, as I have indicated that the MEC is not attending. Out of 15 meetings that we have intergovernmentally, he apologized only on two, the rest not there. Madam Chairperson, St. Francis of Assis is reputed to have said, I quote, start by doing what is necessary, then do what is possible, and suddenly, you are doing the impossible, close quote. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. The Honorable Kaula. Yeah, there was a solution, Peggy, the window was by now. This is going to being a little bit on the show, no, no, no. Shonishwa umaitengwa ni mashabani, shonishwa ubabauzo wani, 
It's always a pleasure to engage you, Babu Zawane. Your humble personality uh, is really appreciated. Uh, Expropriation 
Antunyanga, Ugio Sigaza, Israel, and Gonya Mangejos, Nitunyo Gulanda, Israel. Israel Petro Amakos, Aglone Lamakos. The kings and Amakos, they are merely custodians on behalf of the people. The land itself belongs to the people. I'm sure my honorable MC Mtem will agree with me. Goba, we are born at a socialist. Nati Benkata Sinji. When it comes to socialism, you see, Amakosi are in practice in socialism because they are custodians on behalf of the people. No matter who are Umsaba, Abu Benjalo, Aubuya, and this one is Amakosi, I sing at Umsaba, Ekaneli, Labantubao. Yatawaza. Thank you very much. Order, members, order. 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 We now invite the representative of Salga, Councillor Monlan. Honorable Chairperson of the NCOP, Honorable Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP, Honorable Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Honorable Deputy Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform, Honorable Members of the NCOP, ladies and gentlemen, Bakhay Chudumela. On agrarian transformation and land reform. Rural development and, re and reform underpinned by agriculture as the main economic driver remains one of the key strategic priorities of government for creating a better life for all. While in terms of the latest Reserve Bank report, agriculture, forestry, and fishing industry contracted by the 24.2% and contributed minus 0.7 percentage point to GDP growth. It remains the important sector where more resources must be invested to accelerate economic growth. That in the last financial year, it was the biggest contributor to our positive economic outlook justifies our observation. Honorable Chair, in 1994, government embarked on a number of initiatives and aimed at impacting on the livelihoods of the rural people with agriculture, land reform, transformation of the forestry sector, and most recently, fundamental reconfiguration of the patterns of access and licensing in the fisheries sector. The much talked about stimulation of economic activity in rural peri-rural areas to create a better life for all cannot be achieved without a meaningful agrarian transformation and resourcing of all sectors listed above. Various rural development and agricultural initiatives adopted by government thus far have had varying, degree, varying degrees of success, largely due to the slow pace of transformation in the agricultural, forestry, and fisheries sector. We are particularly pleased that both ministries placed emphasis in their policy speeches on strategic partnerships and inclusivity. On behalf of our member municipalities, we wish to commit to work with these ministries to contribute towards the establishment of viable institutional arrangements to coordinate, manage, and align the initiatives in rural areas. Chairperson being the sphere of government that is closest to the people, active participation of local government in the planning and implementation of all agrarian transformation and rural development initiative is imperative. It is Salga's view that the initiatives by the ministers of rural development and land reform and agriculture, forestry and fisheries should be entrenched in municipal integrated development plans and act as a catalyst for municipal local economic development initiatives. Our emphasis in regional economic and spatial planning is informed by this perspective. 
We are keenly following the development around the fundamental reconfiguration of land in terms of it being an important economic asset, a measure to address the past imbalances in terms of ownership, and a renewed approach to place the state at the center to catalyze economic growth. In this regard, we welcome the state's president's bold announcement to implement effective land reform measures to enhance our efforts to transformation and indeed grow our economy. We are pleased that such efforts will consider a basket of solutions rather than placing more emphasis on one element. Indeed, we must address directly the historical injustices in caring from the inequitable land allocation so as to bring to the mainstream marginalized communities whose contributions can spur shared economic growth, contribute to poverty alleviation, and provide direct and indirect employment. Nevertheless, with respect to the macro-constitutional issues, in our view, the debate has to move beyond focus on mere expropriation and engage on issues of one, access to land and tenure of security that involves family, group rights, enumerations for tenure security, deeds and titles. Two, that land management and planning which entails, among others, citywide slum upgrading, regional land and planning. Three, land administrations and information whose focus is on, for example, modernizing of agencies and budget approach. Four, that land-based financing that encapsulates land tax for financial and land management. On Honorable Chairperson on AgriParks, the AgriParks initiative as outlined by the minister must be seen as a game changer in pursuit of meaningfully changing the livelihoods of marginalized rural communities. The focus of AgriParks on small-scale farmers and the entire agriculture value chain, including agri-processing, will not only create much-needed jobs in rural areas and slow down the rate of rural urban migration, but it will also enable small-scale farmers to process their produce and sell them when they are not price takers. The value commodity and value chain analysis and mapping exercises that will precede the establishment of agri-parks presents an opportunity for territorial and functional regional to local economic development in municipalities and therefore is fully endorsed by SALGA. To date, local economic development initiatives in most municipalities have had limited success due to lack of anchor catalyst programs with a regional footprint. Not only will agri parks create the much needed job opportunities, but they will also contribute to the diversification of rural economies through industrialization as envisaged in the National Development Plan. Chairperson, if I were to remind, remind the House, in October 2015, Salga convened a successful inaugural small towns regeneration conference in Mangaung Metropolitan Municipality. The conference was correctly themed small towns, new futures, and dealt with four small towns typologies, including agricultural towns. We remain convinced that AgriParks are an important initiative and a game changer. Ushering in new futures will breathe life into small towns. Hence our commitment to partner with the two departments in meaningfully improving the lives of the people. We also see AgriParks as an important intervention to solidify the rural urban interface and therefore, if we do it efficiently and effectively, if we do it efficiently and effectively, we will slow down the rural urban migration through creation of economic opportunities in rural areas. It is within the above context, honorable members, that Salga welcomes the announcement by Honorable Nkwana Mashabani to bring into operation the nine rural economic zones originally anchored and pursued under the agri parks program. Minister. It is important, therefore, that the planning of the agri-parks and the identified district municipalities be mainstreamed into municipal IDPs, municipal special development framework, and regional so to ensure that municipal capacity is developed for the sustainable management of this initiative. 
Your announcement during this financial year, your department, your department plans to acquire 98,100 hectares of land through the proactive land acquisition strategy. Final partnerships as part of the Operation Pakisa initiatives is welcomed. We hope that this will include key assets which can unlock economic potential within our municipal urban spaces. We call upon the two ministries together with the national and provincial houses of traditional leaders to structure programs to work with Salga municipalities, leaders on the fundamentals of land use management. In conclusion, Salga supports the various rural development initiatives being pursued by the two departments and looks forward to partnering with the national and provincial sphere of government in the implementation of the various initiatives as, un as outlined by the honorable ministers. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> the honorable Julius. Uh, chairperson, my chairperson, ministers, members, and fellow South Africans, land reform is a very emotive issue, indeed, Honorable Sifaku, but it does necessitate a careful and well thought through approach to get the best outcome for a pro prosperous future for all South Africans. But unfortunately, land reform has proven to be an arduous task for the ANC. 24 years down the line, and we have very little to prove that the efforts that we spent so much money on did not produce the, de de the desired results. We now see that land reform is being used as a political tool by the ANC and the EFF. And in so doing, they prey on the vulnerable, landless people in our, in our country. Honorable Nita, that is the legacy that you need to check. This was actually accurately pointed out by, now, by the Honorable Schaefer. She was spot on. This is such a shame because these are the same leaders that we trusted 24 years ago to address the imbalances brought by apartheid. What are they saying today? They say, give us another chance. Tuma Mina. You know, in the olden days, Honorable Kaula, where uh, elder people will spit on the floor and say, I'm sending you there. If the spit is dry, you must be back. That spit must be dry now. 24 years ago, people are not fools. But instead, the people of South Africa sent you years ago, and what did you do? You looked after yourself and your cronies. How many of the ANC parliamentarians, councillors, uh, MPLs have got land from government? How many? You have forgotten about the people. You put your ANC cronies first. But who are the real fat cats, Honorable uh, uh, Squatcha? Your colleagues. They are the ones eating themselves to death, like you said. Chairperson, this department failed dismally to clear the backlogs in land claims. All policies on land reform in this country was brought to the people by the ANC. It is the same ANC that now want to change the, to populist tactics when suggesting changes to land reform. But Minister, will, 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 uh, will you today commit at least to ask the NPA to reopen the case against the deputy president involving alleged land theft in his province? It is scrapped by the Zuma cronies, I want you to please commit to reopen that case because we cannot continue like this where you just leave it like that or will you take the stance, the approach that the ANC had all along where they protected Zuma, will you also now protect the deputy president? Chairperson, I still have a few questions for you, uh, Minister Honorable Nkwana Mashebani, with due respect. Do you support the current proposals that all land must belong to the government and not to the people. What, what's your stance on this? You are not clear. Do you agree that the people's properties, the land which their homes are built on, will under such a policy belong to government and they will need to rent it back from government again? Will you tell the people of South Africa whether the banks will still be able to lend us money to buy homes? 
I'm coming to you. What will happen to people's existing bonds and banks? Because the value includes land. What will happen to the value of people's properties, your properties? What will happen to the president's farms? What will happen to that? Will they also give it to the government? Will government give people loans to buy a house, given that everything will belong to the state? I bet you don't have answers on these questions because you n did not think this through. You will you tell people left? this, or will you rather mollycoddle the EFF with populist stunts to keep them from getting your votes? Now, Honorable Connie, let me come to you. you. You asked for it. I think you don't have to pick people. The day is a party for all the people. But you pick people, you are the, a party for the poor and the vulnerable. Do you know how many poor people there are in this Honorable country? Julius, and look at your Honorable 10 Julius, votes. hold your horses. Honorable Kony, you are on your feet. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I would like you, Chairperson, to ask the member of the, on the podium if, she, if he will take the question from me. Honorable Julius, will you take a question? No. He says no. No. Please proceed. Uh, uh, Chairperson, with, with your 10 votes, do you really think you represent the poor? With this policy that you're coming up, you will make more people poor, or you think you'll get more votes? because you make more people poor. I don't think your strategy will work. The Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fishery is no different. You are moving at an even slower pace. Chairperson, you know what is further disturbing is that this department has a total disconnect with provincial programs. Unlike what you said, Minister Sokwane, let me give you some examples. The agricultural school in Mahalis, where Houten bought the farm for millions to train black young students interested in farming, turned to in an ANC landmark, a huge flop. Houten abandoned the project after wasting millions of taxpayers' money, and this national department can only say it's a provincial project, like the deputy minister said in our select committee meeting the other day. So, Minister Sekwane, Sekwane, Zokwane. My honorable minister, please don't talk about young people in agriculture because you fail them dismally. That school is closed now. You can't just say it's a provincial thing. We, we can't do anything about it. You said you have to manage your money where it goes earlier. Uh, the minister and department do not even know where this farm is. It's close to your area, Minister, and I told you this about two years ago. Please go and check it out. You never went there. You never said anything about this, and in this budget, there's nothing about it. So there's a total disconnect and neglect also. But also take in provinces, take the Freedom Farm, the Guptas, ACE, and the Free State Provincial Legislation corruption. No national intervention. You say nothing about that. The cattle that was given to Zuma and, and, and others by Supra and the Northwest, no national intervention. But as you say, you should follow up. Did you follow up? Tell us, tell us how far this went. What did you do to ACE and the others that actually gave our money to these people? Honorable, Chairperson, Honorable please take your seat. Honorable Mtimunye, you are on your feet. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, is it parliamentary for members of parliament to deliberately say things they know they are not factually proven and present them as though they were facts? Honorable Mtimunye, you will have to be more direct than that because I'm not sure which part of what you are Honorable referring to. Honorable Julius is making an allegation that came through the newspapers of cattle that were given to former president. Nobody has proven that as true. I know it as allegation. Honorable, Honorable Mtimunye, can I rule? Thank you, Chair. I will rule. I will allow this to flow in the debate. Honorable members, you are free to whatever it is that members say when they debate. If 
the matter had not been covered by the papers, I would have said yes, whatever. As you say, it is an allegation, and members are enabled to refer to allegations. Honorable Julius, in future, when you refer to allegations, paraphrase, refer to them as allegations so that we don't get into this. The Honorable Mutla Shuping. Chairperson, on a point of order. Yes, sir. The, the last time I know a Supra Ramweleti, Obaki Mahumapil, I knew him as an honorable member of the provincial legislature. And uh, I think in this house... Allow him to make his point. I think in this house, when we, when we refer to each other, we call each other honorable members. And maybe for purposes, Chairperson, maybe for purposes of this noise, is that if you resign as a premier, you don't resign as a member of the legislature. Thank you. Honorable member, we do not know whether he is resigned as a member or not. For the purposes of this house, the former premier of the Northwest may be referred to, he's no longer a member, he may be referred to in his first name, like any other. Can we proceed, please? Chairperson, my chairperson, uh, I agree. Supra is an ordinary member. Zuma is an ordinary member of this community. Chairperson, but it's time that the people of South Africa evaluate the ANC, like you said, Honorable Nita, Nita on what they promised 24 I'm years ago. Your time has run they will find that the member. ANC has taken them for a ride. I thank you, Thank Chair. you, sir. The Honorable Pakis. Honorable members. Honorable Chair, fellow colleagues, deputy ministers and ministers present here. It's an honor to me to be part of this important debate in our society, which is not a debate just for the hell of it. We are about the revolution, meaning land, freedom, and equality. This which is about human dignity, deep aspirations, and the needs of the great mass forest of our people, the tormenting poverty and exploited class in particular. Anything abhorrent or opposite is not about the revolution and it's, it's not for the revolution. South Africa suffers from the I historical abuse, emotional blackmail, liberal ideological subversion from the DA. History is an important, is most feared because it's, it threatens the most class interest, both material and psychological. We can avoid, we can avoid to fall prey to the follies of path of ignorance of history. <coughs> history never, is, is never a continuous straight ascent. It has known reverses and disappearance. History always, everywhere expresses the march of progress. In this context, we need to reverse the historical fraud on the land question. Least we forget the misery and the tormenting disposition disposition of land by the imperialist and apartheid colonialism. The basic economic and productive factor in the rural areas is land. Therefore, land expropriation without compensation must be, must be for the benefit of the rural poor and the working class, not for the benefit of the engorged political elite. This should mean two land for human settlement in urban areas. We should assist the local state to transform the skewed apartheid special plan. One of the leaders of the farming community in the name of Lu Louis Menchis, the president of Tau SA said, South Africa's safety lies in its own hands. 
we hold the mightiest weapon in our, in our hands, namely food security. And that our planning continues on assumption that South Africa will still be led by a corrupt government intent on establishing socialist order in our country. Yet, or close quote, Yet while the beneficiaries of the white domination and apartheid privilege cannot be scot-free or remain not guilty from the misery of our people, the poverty that characterizes our society is a carcass left over by the process of voracious accumulation of wealth. The above quote is an unfortunate statement that shows an individual who does not appreciate the profundity of the political moment in our country, let alone the strength of misery, of tormenting poverty. They don't hear any human drag because of their dazzling thing, um, hash money. Honorable Pikes, please take your seat. Honorable, Honorable Chairperson, me? I am struggling with the translation service. Into which language? Oh, uh, English, please. Um, Honorable Smith, Honorable Pakis is speaking in English. Chair, <coughs> please proceed. Chair, the profligacy of the apartheid codified system robbed our people their dignity and our attitude shall never be shriveled nor be sublimated by anything whatsoever. And never again our people shall recoil to servitude. As long as the tributaries of the revolution has not touched the standard and the condition of farm workers in our revolution, it will be far from being over. The security of tenure is one important aspect that could change the fate of the rural poor and the farm dwellers in our country if and when we can, we can be convulsive on land redistribution. We want to call the Department of Rural Development, Honorable Minister, to scientifically evaluate the 50-50 scheme. Remember, we are activists. We are members of the society. That whether this does not constitute fabulous pension fund for commercial farmers, who will remain without benefit from production activity and decision-making authority and ownership of land. We need more deeper sense of productivity beyond the grandiose rhetoric on the land question. Honorable Chair of the House, we want again to the Minister, we need to call for the Department to again investigate the transaction that took place in 2013-2012-2013, which involves Bethlehem Farmers Trust, Impilo Workers Trust, Inkululeko Trust in the Free State Province, where in which workers were supposed to have or have 50% share. And our Ponaply institution in the form of IDC signed there. The state should create capacity to deal with monitoring and compliance of our law on the farmer or farm labor tenants, where farm workers are being evicted on a daily basis. Section 9, section 9, 3 in brackets, the reports which are there in the act could be used effectively to defend farm evictions or defend our people against farm ev evictions. Labor Tenant Act is a crucial piece of legislation with the supreme aim to protect labor tenants and for these labor tenants to acquire land, this should be enforced. These reports must be made compulsory because the failure of our justice system must be dealt with, must be exposed, honorable chair and honorable ministers. But those reports can assist our people that there will be no eviction before that report could be in place and be discussed by all concerned parties. Land bank, we are in 24 years. We need to change and give a different orientation on land bank. We need, Honorable Chair, to invest the resources of this country in things that have in intrinsic value. The question of land disposition of our people have indelibly inched memory, 
Land con constitute the basic, ba what? The, the economic base and assets for development and instrument to fight poverty. Therefore, our natural aptitude and ideological acuity will forever assist us to discursively respond to the liberal ideological subversion of the DA and its weak, weak willed ideological blinkers. What, what our people survived is real, it's not a fiction. Practical and astral battles were fought defending their existence against pervert of imperial colonial system, which reduced our people to servitude and survival level of existence. Left. Four minutes left. Thank you, Chair. Now, this historical accuracy is undeniable in manner and appearance. The DA lacks any form of moral compunction. Instead, present to us, to the society, a diluted phrases. They are saying, Honorable, Honorable Chair, Pakis, please take your seat. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Essek. Order, order, I've got a member on the floor, Honorable uh, Pakis, please take your seat. Honorable Essek, you're on your feet. Uh, with due respect, but uh, through you, could you just ask the member on the podium to speak to South Africans because his job, <laughs> re his job, his job breakers are really mind boggling. Thank That's you, sir. That was not a point of order. Yo, well, Please uh, proceed, Honorable Pakis. Chair, the socio economic and political petrification is embedded in the question of land disposition in our land. J.B. Marx, one of the communist leaders said in July 1969, I quote, our land has been forcibly usurped. Our people turned into landless, rightless proletariat. The objective of this and unrestrained exploitation and oppression, close quote. Henry Guala in 1990 said, direct quote, democracy in a bourgeois society means that everyone has a vote, but you can have a black prime minister, black president, and black cabinet minister still have people going hungry and homeless, close quote. Honorable minister, in Virginia, there's a project called Virginia Mega Poultry. They are still waiting for production inputs and they were promised cycles, three cycles, before that project could take and run on its own. The issue of um, students, Honorable Minister Zogwan, you cannot create a pool of graduates who graduated on diplomas. Well, the state cannot absorb those students. Whom are you creating those young people who will remain unemployed. The agri parks, honorable minister, is one issue which needs immediate intervention so that we, we, we go deeper on the challenges that are facing those um, agri parks. Look, the last issue is we need to invest our resources on marine scientists invest the resources of this country in marine lawyers. There are people who are tenacious not to transform or give a space for us to transform that particular sector of our economy. And we are saying such resources and state intervention must be convulsive. I want to quote Frederick Douglass, 1857. If there's no struggle, there is no progress. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The Honorable, the Minister for Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries, the Honorable Zogwan. Thanks, Chairperson. I sympathize with the Democratic Alliance, especially black members you are forced to justify a system that is corrupt politically, a system that has no basis in our current history. You have to discard and try to embrace it 
For instance, I have listened to all of you who have spoken, including Honorable Haifa. You have never mentioned the issue of commercial farm fisheries, as if it is a domain for white companies, as is the case now. You have just spoken about the, 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 the stealing of fish by a company owned by Arnold Benjes, who stole fish and took it to America. You are silent about that. You are confining, uh, confining black people to small-scale fisheries who fishes in the commercial space. It is because it is white companies. That's why Viking took us to court when we were trying to transform the industry, and they lost. You won't mention that because they are white, and they support the Democratic Alliance. You claim to love black people. Let me tell you, if you loved them, why do you try to lead for being your member? Because she gave you votes. She gave you votes. Now you don't like her because she is independent. You speak as if you are from heaven. 20,000 workers are threatened with eviction. In which province? The Western Cape. Whom are you trying to confuse and lie? Any black person who believes can trust the DA is like a hawk pleading with chicks to follow it to heaven. That is what the DA is. Miss uh, Honorable Haifer, get your facts straight. The company that made allegations against me in particular has been found guilty of conniving with the people you refer to as, as gangsters in Abalo. They Honorable found Minister, guilty twice. Honorable Minister, I must ask you to stop now. Honorable Julius, what's your point? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, the member is addressing a member directly and not through you. Thank you, sir. Honorable Minister, address the member through the chair. Please proceed. Chairperson, thank you, and I will obl ob oblige. For instance, Chairperson, they claim that there's nothing on aquaculture. Meaning, Honorable Smith, since 2014, we've, we've put up 26 projects that are running on aquaculture. Get your facts straight. I am telling you, it is because under the past DA government, there was nothing like that. And I would like to go on and, and, and say, therefore, that all the insinuations about, oh, well, let me go to Honorable Kaula. What they're not mentioning, sir, is that while all those kings fought, two of them had their head chopped off by the past settlers. You go to Limbombo, you will get U U King Sihohoni. He was not only killed, but he said was duplicated. You go to the Eastern Cape, you will find a, a, a grave site of King Yinsa. He was not only killed, his head was taken. It is the brutality of the past regime. So land was not only taken from us, People lost their lives in the process. And I want to say, and I want to say again uh, to, the, to the honorable member from, 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 from Inkatuno party, it was amongst others, the kings and chiefs, who formed part of forming the ANC, who are proud of that. And we all we will forever be indebted to them. And they know very well that it is the ANC that support their, 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 their role that they play. To, 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 to the DA, I would like to say, lastly, Honorable Chairperson, if you want to speak of corruption, understand why was this province plunged into a severe drought where nothing was done to save. It was to ensure that the Israel's agreement and your corrupt provincial government should succeed because desalination was to bring you 600 million rands to fight the coming votes. So you are not clean, sir. You are as guilty as... A, there is nobody who is guilty of DTA. For instance, people in other provinces Order. stay in shacks. Where do they stay in the Western Cape? Under bridges. I am Minister, address her through me. Sorry, Chairperson. She's... I want to say, therefore, I agree with Honorable Pakis. Training a uh, marine scientist is our program. We'll be signing an agreement with Namibia to ensure that there's cooperation in that area so that we can enforce that these commercial companies, Lily White, stop exploiting our marine resources, where the DA will be shine of 
we shy of mentioning them. We need to transform that industry. Minister. Transform we will. Land reform, land expropriation without compensation is the future. And we'll achieve Thank it. Thank you, Minister. The Honorable the Minister for Rural Development and Land Reform, Mengwa Namashabani. Um, Honorable Chair, uh, Honorable uh, Minister, Honorable Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members. Sabe Raina Skurmelo. Raina, Raza Maya. Raza Maya Lebo, Councillor. Oh, representing Salga. She's young, she's pretty, she knows what young people in this country want. We are tired of stories. We are tired of people who play to the gallery. But look at the television. Get your hands dirty in getting our people free. Uh, Honorable MBC, uh, Honorable Pakis, Relequele, Retlo Shuma, Lilena, Arna Moreyang, Ibilare Chabi. Honorable Chair, just a week ago, we were passing a bill or improving on a bill on CPA in the National Assembly. Don't tell us that this program works, this one doesn't. But to Barena, Panyaga or Balima Mabrogalam, but to Babana Honor, Panyaga or Batsevori Community, Tiga Volucara, Lori, but to Panyaga or Pilla, Pilla, Bula, Lora Pella Jambiona, Piasa Hoa, Buske. Yes. If you want to we live in a community, probably a community home, you are allowed to. It's a free South Africa. So, na, kile tiri jaga tsebeje pedi kamuka ba tomper. Kita pagore, reswane jagore. Hare focus on the doing, on getting our hands dirty. Hare to ga logo re ga re baro ngal television ka 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 parliament play to the gallery. I would be ashamed to be seen to be representing preservation of privilege in 2018. And our people are suffering. Corruption is when you dispossessed our people of their, our land. That's where corruption started. We've got programs that have not worked as quick as they should. The president had said to us, quicken your steps. And we would want to say, we have listened. And we have programs that have to be implemented and faster. The fact that you quote, you quote uh, the, the stats of land ownership, but you leave out the 75% of arable land. Uh, Honorable, let me see from Gozul Natal. It's amazing that we still have honorable people who think this is honorable. It was very painful. 75% of arable fertile land. It's not where it should be. We will gain the momentum with the debate. Be it from ANC, be it from uh, all the parties, we are all yes, and we want to, you to join us on the journey to get our, death, our, our hands dirty. Here are young people who are sick and tired of stories who want us to move forward. It was some member here, Honorable Chair, who spoke of dreams, and I was sitting here wondering, our people have been listening to dreams. They want reality because they want land in their hands, not preservation of the past and the way you've been doing things. Where 50-50 partnership would be equal to bringing back farm laborers into some scheme, some work, some are very painfully insulting. 
and we have, I have in the two months been to some of them, where people are still supposed to be partnership. They are still wearing aprons, not red ones, and sitting in the corner, and they are called partners. So, we are ready. As a jiggy, a little well on a raro, rea pele, roquele, that is for Gorle, Tilgam Gabon, that em tembu. What excited me, and that will make me go to sleep happy, is the young counselor, Wamosadi, Raleboha, Kilaborin, Ralebohan. Honorable members. That concludes the debate and the business of the day. I would like to thank you, ministers and deputy ministers, our special delegates, for availing yourselves for this debate. Honorable members, you are requested to remain standing until the procession has left and this house is adjourned. <laughs>